just give me a minute here. Realize some things aren't, some things weren't saved from the previous layout. Wait, where the hell is my damn thing at? Oh. Let me see my stream overlays. Yeah. Gonna give me, uh, probably gonna be giving all the stream overlays a makeover by the beginning of next year. There we go. Just in case I need a break screen for anything. Now let me change this right here. Let me do a forcing here. Okay. Nice. Let's go and experiment. I right, just to make sure that I'm uh Fine, pulled my back from yesterday, still recovering, ran into smoothies last night on a lock stream. Oh, okay. Pulled your back yesterday? What do you secretly <laughs> Gerard the completionist? I think he threw his back out too. Okay. Okay, again, now my phone just my phone just now realized I went live. So that's probably, uh, so okay, I've been live for like the last, like, two, three minutes, and now you guys are probably just getting the notification. So, yay! Twitch's latency is really, it's really fun. How's everybody doing tonight? Well, today, or, no, I mean, about an hour, I can technically call it an evening. Uh, Gaming Guy and uh, Telemans, thank you very much for the host. And Nitroware, thank you very much for the tier one sub, dude, three months, that gives you the mug. Your white mug. Enjoy it. Put whatever the hell you want in it. Uh, the chat is in subscriber only mode for this, of course. Uh, as a, like all future sub nights. I got no coffee, just bottle of water. Uh, and I got, hope I get enough sleep for tomorrow because tomorrow we got that, uh, the Mega Maniacs live stream. In fact, uh, at the bottom of the channel. Uh, you could, you'll you see the buttons for the Extra Life page and the uh, Switch and uh, NES and SNES Classic bundles there. But I also got to make sure the uh, YouTube page is set up for that as well. They, the, the YouTube page won't get all those fancy buttons, but they'll get links. You could be playing Skyrim. Nah, I'm alright. <laughs> Wait until tomorrow, Todd. Wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, have fun with Mega Man and Base. I actually just finished putting Mega Man and Base into my uh, SNES Classic for tomorrow's event because that game is not a part of the Legacy Collection. I wonder why. <laughs> How about this match direct? But we did it already. All right, uh, I'm gonna start looking at the questions for last stream. Pretty much pick up where I left off from last time. I went ahead and deleted all the ones I answered last time, and um, hopefully I won't be spending... I can get as many as I can as possible, and if I don't, don't be a baby about it. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, Mystery Man, is it the original version or GBA version? It's the original version. Fuck, I ain't playing GBA version. 
<laughs> yeah, the great comet purge, I agree. My man knows. Alright, so let me just go ahead. Uh, let me just go ahead and start here with uh, Hector Crystal. Uh, after going through two of the main series Silent Hill games, what is your overall opinion on them and would you be willing to play them for yourselves? I'd be willing to play Silent Hill 2 for myself. Maybe 3. That's it, though. I, I have never had much interest in Silent Hill, I'm going to be honest, because it, it, it was just... It's a very slow psychological horror. For me. I mean, you know, I, the one thing I love about Resident Evil is that I think it blends both horror and action pretty damn well. And, but Silent Hill is more of a, it's very, it's a very slow paced. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it requires more from me, I believe, to just sit down and start playing it. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is probably the one game I would play among all the others, only because I saw firsthand what kind of game it is, and it does intrigue me. Uh, here, Chris, I have a smash joke for you, thanks for the conversation I had with, uh, Patrick. Yeah, my smash, uh, ultimate joke. So I added product plants to my characters to the lab, and I told Wee Dude I was gonna lab a plant. Realized what I said, and I was studying the science of pot. I told the tagline for plants, and I smash weed every day. Ye I never heard of lab a plant, Hero Chaos Chow, so... I think you're probably smoking way too much of that shit already. And it's piranha plants, not even out yet. <laughs> Alright, uh, Rady Shine Amigo asks, Have you ever thought of going to a convention that is overseas to meet fans from other countries? Um, for a time, a long time ago, a long time ago, I wanted to attend the, uh, the Summer of Sonic event that was, I think, was in London. And I, I don't think they have it anymore. Uh, and that was, like, one of the only events that I would like to travel overseas to, but, you know, that's that's said and done. I mean, f those in the uh, those in international territories or UK or wherever the hell you're from, that's not the United States. If you have any recommendations, uh, I mean, I'm all ears because I would like to travel you know, uh, to different parts of the world at some point in my life, I mean, when the money's right and when my, when my, uh, when my college debt is paid off, uh, especially. Uh, Gamescom in Germany. New Zealand is a pretty cool place. I mean, MCM London is a thing, but it's really big and crowded. What is it like? Wait, what is MCM? Uh, MCM. I've heard of EGX. I never heard of MCM. And I've heard of Gamescom. Uh, but I never, uh, okay. MCM is literally London Com- Okay, I figured, but I, I, I figured I'd ask anyway. MCM is literally London Comic Con. Huh. Interestante. Oh. Alright, uh, let's continue on. Uh, Gamer asks, what was your first Dragon Ball Z episode slash movie you watched? Also, big fan, love to do fan art. Thank you very much, Gamer. It's a very generic name, but, uh, it's close to my heart. <laughs> uh... My first Dragon Ball Z episode, God, I don't think I can accurately answer that. I do know I started with the Saiyan Saga, because for a time, that's all they aired. <laughs> they aired the Saiyan Saga, and then like a bit of Namek, and then they would reset as soon as Goku landed on the planet and took care of Rikum. And that was it. I mean, did he take care of... No, 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 he didn't actually take care of... Uh... Yeah, he just took care of Rikum. Until Funimation took over. So... Yeah, I've been familiar with the Saiyan Saga. My first movie was World Strongest. Uh, and then I saw... Which is... Oh, I know. That's like the second movie. And I saw Dead Zone later. I kind of went backwards there. Uh, but I fell in love, especially. Uh, in Especially in regards to the... Uh, the Japanese Dragon Ball Z soundtrack. Because for some reason or another, the ocean dub... Dead Zone and World's Strongest movies left the Japanese soundtrack intact, and that's when I was introduced to it. And I was like, "Oh, this is this is fantastic! I absolutely love this music." Bio Broly was your first movie experiment. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> hey, Psychotic, thank you very much for that. What's up, dude? 
Oh, you got uh, uh, tier one sub. You got the, you got the mugs. It's been over three months, dude. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's continue on. Lucas Bradley, hey Johnny, can you do a rant on why you almost died to Storm Eagle? No, I'm sorry. I'm that was like nine years ago. I got it, it, that. That's not even a dead horse at this point. It, it's just, I mean, that's a maverick. You can call it that if you want to. Dead horse. It's like an undead, like, horse that looks like a skeleton, but it's actually a full, f uh, functional robot. Uh, and you, you just beat it to the ground until it's nothing but powder. So. <laughs> Is it made of crystallized cheat? No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Jones116. I don't know what to ask, really. Uh, ever tried paintball, airsoft, laser tag? I tried laser tag a long fucking time ago, and I haven't done it since. I've never done paintball, even though I, I would like to. I hear it's painful. And uh, I think I'd legitimately get shot if I had an airsoft gun. So, probably going to hold off on that one. But I did do laser tag a long time ago, back in, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what the name of the arcade was, but I did have it set up. And it was fun. I didn't spend very long on it, but it was it was pretty fun. I was with my parents, though. We didn't have much time to stay around. And I was more of an arcade kid back in the day anyway, so... <laughs> paintball is already... Yeah, I mean, we, I guess we all kind of play paintball anyway, and it is Splatoon. Uh, Kaiba Man 41 YouTube. Uh, I, I, I can't, honest to God, tell if that's a shameless plug, Kaiba Man. <laughs> hey, Johnny, can you do a rant on why Tails Doll is an asshole? I don't know, man. I can't really speak for the dead. Because I haven't seen him since the Ghosts and Goblins review. Well, no, he did give me Echo the Dolphin. And that's it. I have not heard from him ever since, and um, I'm going to assume that he's just, I don't know. He, he, he's kind of like the Boogeyman, but the Boogeyman only applies if you're like a teenager or a kid, and I'm like 31 years old, so what the hell do I have to be scared of? <laughs> Sick burn, he is dead. <laughs> uh, True Blue, uh, True Blue 5, we ever do that dead rot... De <laughs> you say dead or rising, it's dead rising. Uh, video you teased in your SUV ourselves review, or has that been cancelled? It's not been cancelled, because uh, I didn't want to straight up cancel it. It has been put on the back burner, if uh, one thing because my schedule just got hectic and Elliot, oh man the big thing about the last few months of this year was Elliot's schedule has just been absurd with, uh, because he's currently doing six classes He's, he's pretty much on an accelerated course to graduate on time for December because the Art Institute of Philadelphia will shut down after that. So Elliot has to take about six classes before they do so. And it's just been... we sgb has been on crunch time for like the last month, month and a half. And I know he's going to pull through. He's been doing really good so far. But as a consequence, like SGB has suffered a bit. Uh, for like uh, Halloween Fest this year, we we only had time. We did Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which already kind of technically started in September. You know, Matt had Silent Hill, and Elliot uh, is currently doing Walking Dead, but that's all we had the time to do for, you know? Because normally when we do Halloween Fest stuff, I like to also do a lot of one-offs. You know, we didn't even do a FNAF game. You know, I think Elliot did a, I think Elliot did a, a custom night in, in one of the live streams, uh, but we have not, we did not had the time to do a lot of one-offs, which, you know, it bums me out because I really... Uh, Halloween Fest is one of my favorite things to do for SGB every year, but, you know, them's the... We don't have the time for it, them's the breaks, and, you know, LA's education uh, is really important to him, so uh, I... That's what matters. So hopefully next year, uh, things will be a little better, and we can uh, more to make up for it. Oh, uh, thank you for the tier one subs, uh, Lincoln. Oh, six months, dude. You get your golden mug. Enjoy it. Doesn't make the drink taste any better, but you can, you know, pretend you're a rich asshole. Oh, he did stream it on Halloween. Okay, I figured as much. I, I was busy giving out candy to kids. I didn't, wasn't really paying attention to the Twitch streams. Alright, uh, Sifra. Uh, Sifra. Is that FC? Sifra? I don't think that name sounds so familiar. In regards to any media, is there anything from the past that you would like to return to and give a second view or play? Like, for example, a case of being someone initially didn't like Berserk, went back and read the series up to now, or someone giving a game like Final Fantasy X a second shot. Anything I would like to give a return to and give a second view or play? I mean, maybe something from my childhood that I haven't watched in a long time because I didn't like it back then. But nowadays, if I watch something and I don't 
have much opinion on it, then I likely won't go back and visit it because I'm pretty sure I got a solid opinion on it. So probably something from my childhood, but that list runs endlessly, and I would need some serious time to consider that. Maybe a television show, I'm not sure. Maybe I mean, we'll look back at Power Rangers. <laughs> See how much it holds up. Probably not very well, but... <laughs> uh, it, maybe in terms of games... Honestly, God, I, I can't give a good answer for that one, because... Even at my age, I still go back and play stuff I used to play all the time as a kid, and my opinions on them are pretty much the same as I did back then. The only a, the only difference, or maybe a few Sonic games would change, but uh, I don't know. Again, that's kind of a loaded question. I have to think about that because that requires me to go back into my mental backlog. <laughs> hey, Edgy Joshmo, thank you for about two. What's up, dude? <laughs> the dildo guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just up and by say how you know Diddle's currently displayed beautiful on my shelf. Okay, I hope the signature is facing outward. Thank you very much. And Mario 649, thank you very much for tier one sub as well. Alright, uh Spider Spooky, will SGB get back to the superhero marathon? I always look forward to you guys playing Spider Man 2. Uh okay, okay, the superhero marathon again, it just depends on time. It depends on time and what everybody's doing. And I would like to think that when Elliot finishes school, we'll have time to sit down and plan out the whole year and, you know, get playthroughs out and, out and about. Because, uh, again, I, the Halloween Fest is pretty lackluster. I would like to go back to superhero thon I would like to have another bat -thon. Like, personally, I would like another bat -thon because the bat -thon is one of my favorite things we did on the channel uh, a few years ago. And I would like to pick up where we left off. Well, we'll pick up where we left off with Arkham Origins, but also I would like to go back and play some of the older Batman games again, like Batman Return of Joker, uh, probably the Sega Genesis version of Batman and Robin. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the Adventures of Batman and Robin, uh, and all that sort of shit. Yeah, Lego Batman 2 and 3. <laughs> uh, was it Riko Hogashi? Is that how you pronounce your name? Hey, John, love your personality. Have you gotten any gift sub bombs lately? Yeah, there was this one dude. Uh, I forgot his name. It's not Fire. I want to say it was Fear, who gift bombed a whole a whole bunch of people the last couple of weeks. And then I think Ronnie also gift bombed. No, no, he didn't gift bomb. He did a tier two sub. Uh, and you know, really appreciative of that. But yeah, uh, somebody uh somebody gift bombed a couple of people the uh, last couple of weeks, and it's been it's pretty cool. Uh, let me see. Artist who speaks in cheese. <laughs> do you think we'll ever really? Do you think you'll ever release an art book one day? Uh, no. I honest, I don't see myself doing that because I'll, uh, maybe if it was uh, a full, it was a book just full of like like pencil sketches, then maybe in a, in years years from now. Because I don't. What's funny is that I don't really draw a lot of original things anymore for myself. I, I basically just doodle, you know, things that, I'm, uh, that I really enjoy. I, I'll, I'll doodle Sonic characters, Final Fantasy stuff, you know, Mario, you know, fan art, basically. I, rarely do I do OC stuff. Like the borderline in my Final Fantasy XIV character, or a, a friend's Final Fantasy XIV character. That is pretty much what I... I haven't... The last OC or uh, any sort of thing I've ever done that I've ever drew was uh, this one character I made for... <laughs> so back in the back in my high school days, I used to write fan fiction. Do you guys, did you guys ever... Uh, did you guys ever use Zanga? You guys ever heard of Zanga? Uh, it was pretty much like live journal. Just write diaries pretty much. Uh, we, uh, when I was in high school, uh, Matt, myself, and a few other friends, we used something called Zanga. And for Matt and I specifically, it was our, it was our means of writing fan fiction. We used to write Final Fantasy fan fiction, a lot of self-inserts, of course. Uh, and back in the day, it was just an excuse to just, you know, it, it was pretty much a power fantasy trip. But by, like, the third story... Uh, I started using that as a vehicle to just make my own creations. And one of my creations was this girl named Naomi, who wielded a battle axe. 
uh, had was secretly the vessel of so this this one demon that's not a total asshole but like really murderous. Uh, yeah, it's cliched as you can get, uh, but it gave me an excuse to you know draw stuff like that. Uh, and but that was literally like the last OC I've ever drew. I'm, I'm struggling just even to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, Rush. Yeah, it's totally, totally edgy, dude. It, it is like the most, uh, <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy 16 power fantasy, power Final Fantasy. Yeah, the story was shit, but it, I, I liked, I liked the time spent on it because it gave me an excuse to draw stuff I would normally never draw, and for that, I, I, I appreciate those days. Uh, you'll never find those stories ever again, though. They've been burned <laughs> digitally. Uh, Dark Wolf six two one one asks, "Have you dabbled in real time strategy genre? Long time ago. I don't like it. I don't like uh, I don't like RTS. I, I was never a fan. I gave it a shot, legitimately tried to, and I, I, I honestly got can't find any enjoyment on it. Which actually would kind of lead into something that uh, I think Cifra asked earlier. If there was a game I would like to go back to, this question actually just kind of make brings it up. Fire Emblem. I would like to give Fire Emblem another chance, but that." I don't plan on doing that for a long time. Uh, Corn the Cobb. I love that name. Question. Will there be more movie commentaries in Brain Scratch? That is up to Ryan, Lewis, and Ted. I'm just one guy. I would love to do more. But our schedules would need to line up. And we are four different people with four different schedules. So, you know, we can't snap our fingers and say, we're doing this today. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Aura asks, have you read or, or at least heard in passing about the events in the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog comic series or so thoughts? I need to I need to catch back up on those because I've only had up to issue four, which I think was when Tangle and Blaze were introduced. Uh, and I've been enjoying it so far, but it's like I don't have a subscription to IDW and I don't go to comic book stores often. Uh, like once in a blue moon. And when I do, I, I, pick, up, I pick up some floppies here and there, but... Uh, not uh, I, I usually invest in uh, trades. I mean, are there any IDW trades yet of Sonic? Because if there are, then I'll start buying some. Because I, I like to buy trades more often than just uh, single floppies. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, move on here. Uh, Autumn Clearwater. Uh craziest anime crossover you would want that would literally make no sense by the way it doesn't have to be limited to anime but I figured it was helpful to limit it for you now wait a minute hold on you can't have your cake and eat it too autumn <laughs> you said craziest anime crossover that he said it doesn't have to be limited to anime well they don't call it anime crossover just say media crossover get the entire thing under your umbrella you said anime so I gotta say anime uh shit but you're also asking a guy who doesn't watch that much anime <laughs> Uh, shit. I don't know. Because... Is, is Smash Brothers an anime? <laughs> uh, hmm, I don't know. Because the animes I like are kind of like one-offs. Like, I wouldn't want Cowboy Bebop to cross over with anything. Because Cowboy Bebop is fine as it is. Uh, I guess Dragon Ball. But Dragon Ball crossed over with One Piece, I think. Did Dragon Ball ever cross over with Naruto or some other shit? Did it cross over with Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> there you go. I want a Yu-Gi-Oh crossover with Pokemon. Why not? <laughs> uh, Sync, uh, your question is, so as a small timer myself, I have to ask, what keeps you focused on your work because I may be too distracted? All right, well, well, I mean, there's always the passion for it, but there's also bills. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I do what I do because I, honest to God, love doing it, but I'm also a realist in that I got bills to pay. And if I don't do this shit, I don't get paid, and I can't pay my bills. And then I'm out of a house. <laughs> I'm out of a house. I'm out of things that I like to indulge in. You know, internet, games, multimedia in general. It's just, uh, those are the 
those are the facts. I do what I do because I, I keep focused because I got to pay the bills. <laughs> I'm not money motivated, but I like money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I got it. It's the responsible thing to do. We got, we got bills to pay, and I got to handle my business. Um, Zafia, a question. Have you ever considered... Uh, have you ever considered, or do you try to use they, them as gender-neutral term instead of he for us non-binary fans here? It is, uh, Zafia, I honest to God, that is something I am trying my damnedest to work on because I'll still catch myself uh, using the wrong uh, pronouns when trying to ad address male, female, and uh, fucking everything else. <laughs> Uh, because I, I don't want to come across as rude, but I, I sometimes I swear to Christ, there's like 50 other terms that I don't know about, and I'm going to one day piss somebody off, learn it the hard way, and that's the last thing I want to do. So I don't know. I I I gotta maybe one day just look up a glossary about what the proper term to use in this situation is that situation is because i don't want to piss anybody off you know that's the last thing i want to do but i do want to start getting better with that i just don't know when <laughs> you know because i i still i still struggle with non-binary i've only learned about i've only learned about cis because i didn't know i didn't know that was a thing for the longest time uh gender fluid uh, I, I feel there's like three other things I'm missing here, but that's my point. And uh, I, I, I'm not sure if some things are interchangeable or, uh, or if something just covers them all. Whatever. So I think for now I'll just stick with they, just so I don't piss anybody off. Well, yeah, I'll say hey friend or pal or bud. You know, gender neutral connotations. Uh, that's the best I can do. <laughs> You gotta learn your pronouns of your arch fiend fans. <laughs> yeah, old buddy, old friend, old pal is probably uh, the best way to go about it. Uh, Yusuke, John, do you think you'll do something new for the channel in a review podcast from Boy Haunting? What? It's not even a question, Yusuke. <laughs> it's just a runoff sentence. There's no punctuation. There's no capitalization anywhere except for the word question. Johnny, do you think you'll do something new for the channel in review podcast from? Or just what? Am I pertinent? <laughs> or just whatever you can. Uh, I would. I, I like the review podcasts. The thing is, is that. I don't prioritize them because I'd rather just make a Johnny versus, if possible. It depends on the kind of game and depends on how large the game is, honestly. You know, because the reason why I did a review podcast for like Final Fantasy XIV, well, it was a sponsored video, one thing, and I, I felt better suited to make it a review podcast because I only did about like 20 hours of that game when I first covered it, and that's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, uh, people come to my channel expecting Johnny Versus, and I want to give them more Johnny Versus. Oh, is that, uh, I appreciate it. Most people are, they think they is fine, even if it's not their preferred, it's not limiting. Uh, okay, then I'll try to use they more often. Uh, if, 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 it's, if it's perfectly cool with people. Alright, Revolver Oshawott. Love that name. Have you ever watched the Code Lyoko series? Nah, and I never had any interest in it. Was that WB? Or was that Cartoon Network? Um, because that sounds like something from one of those networks. And uh, I I've heard of it, but I never had any interest in watching it. It was Cartoon Network. Okay. Hey, Real Edgy, thank you for the bits. I became 19 today, so let me selfishly get some attention here. <laughs> well, happy birthday, uh, Real Edgy the Hedgy. Enjoy your last year as a teenager, technically. Although I think teenage years technically end at 17 or 18 when you're considered an adult. Alright, uh, let's see. Saxy Assassin. Uh, if you could change anything about your life, what would it have been? Uh, I would convince myself from 10 years ago not to use shampoo every goddamn day, so I'd still have hair. 
you know. <laughs> you know, when I get a haircut and it's all like when it's when it's nice and bald like that, then it's okay. Uh, but when I let my hair grow out and it makes my uh, male pattern baldness really fucking obvious, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, so I, that was that's probably the immediate thing because I honestly God do miss my hair. I do miss my hair and I, I wish I could get it back, but I don't. I, I I'm not shameless enough to like do those hair restoration surgeries or those products or whatever the hell they try to shill to um, to insecure men. I miss my hair, but. Uh, I do think I rock the bald look pretty well, but upkeeping it is a bitch, and I hate shaving it because I, I swear to Christ I miss <laughs> in the back. <laughs> uh, wait, do you have a picture with you having hair? Yes, I think it's from high school. I probably don't have them anymore, but they're there. Yeah. Uh, Lemur asks, "How big is your backlog of games you have yet to play? Pff, hundreds." Hundreds, literally hundreds. I'm pretty sure half of that shelf over there is I have not touched. And that's not even including Steam games. Like, Steam games is probably bigger, if not the same size. And I, I mean, I don't want to die <laughs> for like another 50 years. So I like to think I got enough time, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Eccentric Gamer, what cheap program would you recommend to animate little stuff like stick figures that isn't Pivot? I would just like to see if I cannot use Flipnotes Studio. Cheap program? Hmm. Huh. I never had to use a cheap animating program at all, because I was always familiar with Adobe Flash. Well, it's called Adobe Animate now. Uh, I don't know. I, I think maybe... Maybe Shade would know more about that. Tomb Boom is another thing, but I don't know if that's cheap. God, I haven't used Tomb Boom in years. And even then, it was only for maybe a week, because I was already... I'm a Flash guy. Like I, I, I use Adobe Flash, Adobe Animate, because I'm just familiar with the interface more. I know Shade uses Flip No, but maybe she would know like some uh, other, uh, other cheap alternatives. So I don't know... Uh, I don't know uh, what to do. <laughs> All right, Cosmic Haru. Uh, question: When can we have Celine rest? When can we have Celine rest if top of your head during your streams? You guys don't spell check your shit at all. It's like, what's the fucking rush, guys? <laughs> Celine will never rush. Uh, will never rest on top of my head, especially not nowadays, because she moves all over the place. She fucks with my ear a lot, uh, and it, it, it's it's like clockwork. I get up in the morning or whenever the hell I get up, and she'll get on the bed, and then she'll just start. She'll climb my back and then start swiping my ears. So I doubt she'll ever rest on my head. And uh, fucking in a few months' time, when she's basically a year old, she'll be too big. Uh, I don't want her on top of my head. <laughs> Uh, Starman25, are you finished with those errands? Uh, yeah, I, I am, because I spent pretty much all morning and early afternoon getting the assets ready for the, uh, live stream tomorrow for Mega Maniacs. I mean, uh, it's, it's not much to set up, though, honestly, because we're not racing this year. You know, it's just one person, well, it's just one console that has legacy collection set up, so the, the setup's actually pretty easy. But Ben's doing most of the work because of the radio setup and all that sort of thing, and I gotta make sure I bring some uh, other things with me, so... And I hope to Christ I get enough sleep tonight. Like, a good eight hours, preferably. Or, knowing me, I'll go to sleep at 11 and I'll wake up at 2. And I won't be able to go back to sleep for the rest of the night, because fuck... Okay, uh, let me see here. Crimson Trooper. Uh, question, has there ever been a time where you, Elliot, or Matt ever had a dispute of how a game should be handled for the Let's Play channel? And if so, how vulgar did you or Matt get? Now, there was never an argument over who should handle this or that, or how we should handle this or that. Uh, because we generally just let, her, let each other play the game how we want, for better or worse. 
But there's, I don't think there's ever been. I say I don't think because I don't recall ever having a dispute uh, for having uh, ha having a certain way of playing a game. <laughs> Matt should get some glasses. So we'll tell Matt that <laughs> he won't listen to you though. Uh, Isaac is a scrub. Oh, Otaku. Okay. Can I compose an original end credits song for one of your videos, assuming you want a new one? With the uh, ellipses at the end of that one. So I was like, are you trying to bait me into getting some sort of emotional response, Otaku? You put that ellipses at the end of your sentence. Uh, I'm not currently looking for any new music. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not currently looking for anything at the moment. <laughs> uh, Mario9919 asks, uh, what would you say is the best N64 game? I'm kind of the wrong guy to ask that because I was not an N64 kid growing up. I was PlayStation. Uh, so I can only give you what I've played. And honestly, uh, as 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 obvious as the answer might be, it's Smash Brothers. Because I got the most memories of that game with uh, with friends. You know, we back in middle school and up until uh, the beginning of high school, we played Smash Brothers a lot. And Pokemon Stadium to some extent, but... Uh, Smash Bros. is where it was at. I had the most memories of that, and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't experience some other N64 games until later. But uh, I, it hurts that I didn't grow up with the system, so I can't, honest to God, say. So I would say the one with the most memories is Smash Bros. Uh, Mac asked, "What game would you 100% without question recommend to someone if they asked?" Uh, without question. Uh, it's, well, I just look at my favorite games of all time. Uh, Super Metroid, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Resident Evil 4, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 6. Yeah, yeah, those, those I, I think that as gateways into, uh, those kind of genres, they're perfect for what they want to do. Uh, well, for Metroid, I guess Zero Mission would probably be better suited or Fusion, but... Those, basically, uh, a game that I would 100% without question recommend to someone is pr pretty much anything that I consider my favorite game of all time. Mega Man and Base, yeah. Mixed with King and Jacob, uh, the sixth language, yeah. But Mega Man and Base. That's Mega Man. <laughs> Base sucks. <laughs> uh, is it Amphorite? Uh, is it Amphorite? Is that how you pronounce your name? Or, or Marie, okay. I'll just, use, I'll just use Marie, because your name's in... Uh, parentheses here. Is it up dog? No, I don't have a dog. And uh, see, Mario and uh, Linky were having a chat in the questions for a live stream thing, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> but hey, fuck rules. <laughs> okay, uh, what is the most frust? Uh, Troy one six eight asks, what is the most frustrating game that you ever experienced in your reviewing career, Johnny? <sighs> I mean, you guys could probably answer that for me. Uh, most frustrating game? Probably Ghosts and Goblins, because I played that off the original hardware. No save states. And uh, Echo the Dolphin. Again, original hardware, no save states. For both that and Tides of Time. Uh, Meat Boy, uh, Super Meat Boy, was pretty damn frustrating. Uh, I'm trying to think. I know there's something else off the top of my head that I d uh see. Cause frustrating is different. Can of worms because dreadful or boring or just elongated are different things. I want to see. Dark Souls was frustrating, but I still had a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, enough of a good time that I want to go and try out the uh, uh, the other games, uh, especially Dark Souls Three. Uh, Bubsy, <sighs> Bubsy was dull. I want to say not. I don't know. Bubsy just there. It's just there. That's all. Sonic Heroes. No, because I can play and beat Sonic Heroes is that you got to do it four fucking times. Sonic Genesis, I mean, it speaks for itself. 
But I would say the king of it was probably Ghosts and Goblins and Echo the Dolphin. Because I I don't like those games. I I, I don't like uh, I don't like them. Well, I probably play Ghosts and Goblins before I play Shadow uh, not Shadow the Hedgehog, Echo the Dolphin. But I don't, if I had the choice, I wouldn't play any of them. All right, uh, Benguin asks, "What animes do you watch?" Not much nowadays, honestly. I uh, no, I, I really don't. I don't watch any anime uh, as of late because I'm very picky, or I I get recommendations and I just if they just trail off because I don't know. I, I I I'm more attuned to watching you know shows on Netflix or just watching subscription services or just YouTube videos. I haven't had the, I just haven't had the the time or mental capacity to just sit down and just watch an anime. You know what I mean? Castlevania. Uh, I mean, it's anime esque. It's an anime. <laughs> I guess if if we were to count that, then yeah, Castlevania was the the, the latest one I watched. Uh, My Hero Academia. No, I've I've watched uh, f like the first seven episodes a year ago. I haven't picked it up since. You know, I just, eh, I just, I try, I try and watch them. And I, I forget about them, and then I just, you know, I move on to other stuff. Uh, Plant Gang, you're asking your hypothetical future child asks you to sing them a song for me. First off, me having a kid. <laughs> you ask them to sing you a song from a cartoon you watched as a child. What do you pick? King Ramses, <laughs> the man in Goss, the man in Goss, the man in Goss. <laughs> That's probably what I sing to my kid. He he would get it. I would hope so. Or she. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sherm Tank. After playing and slash reviewing it, what was the game on which your opinion changed the most? Good to bad or bad to good, just opinion changing in general. I uh, probably the Sonic Adventure stuff, uh, Sherm Tank, because it was a while when it, when I reviewed the games back in 2012. That was after not playing them for a couple of years, like fully from beginning to end, and. I, it, it made it easier for me to see that I didn't really like half of this or half of that. And, yeah, I, it, they really did sour my taste on them over the past years. Because, you know, when I first played, you know, Adventure 1 and Adventure 2 would games I would defend to the end back in 1999 and 2000, 2001 is when I first played them. You know, because to me, they were, they were what I look they were... What I was looking for back in the day, you know, it was Sonic, it was 3D. We were moving all all over the place, up and down, all around. It's like to say, uh, but then uh, you know, you get older, you 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 experience other games in the genre, how other games, you know, perfect the formula or make better use of the formula. Then you try and go back to the old stuff, and it's like, wow, this is actually not that good <laughs> in comparison, you know, and. It's just, I don't know, it's just the way it, it's the way it goes. I'm something I liked back as a kid. I don't like it anymore because I, it's easier for me to recognize the faults in it, and I'm not blinded by rose tinted goggles. Well, for some things, I won't admit that I'm not. <laughs> uh, Ruka, I would love Sonic Colors on Steam. Sonic Unleashed. I mean, we have the. Unleash project, but I know that's not the same thing because I know people will. I know some people do legitimately like the Werehog, so uh, just for the full Unleash package, I I wouldn't be against it. Let's put it that way. I'd probably wouldn't prioritize it over Sonic Colors though because I like Colors more than Unleash. All right, uh, Marsh. What are your thoughts on current slash upcoming card games? Uh. I I still only play Yu-Gi-Oh, and even then I'm very on and off of Yu-Gi-Oh, compared to how much I played it like a decade ago. So if I I have no idea what the hot new card game is nowadays, if there is any at all, because when I when I'm surrounded by my other friends or just just chums in general, we're discussing either Magic, which I don't play, or Yu-Gi-Oh, 
which I do. Or maybe the Pokemon trading card game. I hear that's still making its rounds. But in terms of like new card games, I don't I don't know what the hell is current. I, I, is there? I don't know. I feel you guys are probably better suited for answering that. I've never heard of RPCS3, Real Edge of the Hedgy. Never heard of it. In fact, I think you made it up. I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, SGM asks, what classic slash retro game would you like to see be imported in modern consoles? Uh, Brave Friends and Musashi. It's classic at this point. It's over 20 years old. <laughs> Uh, so I, I would say I would like for that to get a modern release or just a remake at this point. Uh, Blue Dragon, would you ever say part of your, f would you ever say you're part of a fan base besides the obvious Sonic, Sonic a few years ago? Wait, would I ever say I'm part of a fan base besides the obvious Sonic, Sonic a few years ago? Not, uh, Blue Dragon, I'm not sure if you're in the chat. I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Would you ever say you're part of a fan base besides the obvious Sonic slash Sonic a few years ago. I don't know what that means. Like, am I part of a fan base? I mean, I yeah, I, I would like to think that anything that I'm a fan of, I guess I'm part of that fan base. You know, I'm a fan of Metroid. I'm a fan of... Uh, I still... You know, I, I follow Sonic News and all that sort of thing. Mario, I follow news. So... so yeah, I, I mean, anything that I, I legitimately enjoy, I do like to keep up with in terms of, like, news or updates and all that stuff. So, yeah, I would, I would still say that I'm part of that fan base. Yeah, Johnny is the fan base. <laughs> Silly bitch. <laughs> well, see, Blue Durgan, I have, to, I have to ask, what exactly is the difference? Because a Sonic fan base consists of Sonic fans. So I, what, why would it, why would it be called anything else? You know what I mean. <laughs> I guess in my mind, as in you're taking part of fan content, so just like a community. You know, uh, I mean, it depends. I guess certain sub-series of a community. I'm part of the community that keeps their mouth fucking shut <laughs> until the game comes out, and then I play it, and then tell people about it, and then if it's good, it's great. I'll, I'll recommend it to people. If it's not, I'll complain about it, and then just move on to another thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I try to do that with everything. Uh, Alright, Damon Skyheart 15 is asking, uh, were you ever... Into Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, I was. Have you ever considered getting back into it? Uh, yeah, I, I lived and breathed Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, during my high school days. Uh, starting in 2002, and up until 2007, I went to locals, I went to regionals, and we I dueled a hell of a lot with my high school buddies and my college friends. Uh, and after 2007, I... I I stopped being tournament serious, and I just I, I dropped it for a bit. And I've recently been picking it back up, but it's been a very slow pickup, and there are some things I just refuse to learn. <laughs> I'm still struggling with synchros, XZs, now there's the link summonings, and the pendulums, and the... It, it's a mess. There's like, there's so much more to learn about the game that... Uh, I have a goat deck just to go into goat format because it's, you know, <laughs> that's the, the crotchety old fuck format. Uh, and when it comes to making an advanced build, I tend not to use any of the new, the new fancy, fan, fancy smancy cards because I, there's a part of me that refuses to just learn how the cards work, which is a problem because if, God forbid, I go against an opponent that is using those cards, I need to make sure I know how the cards work so they're not getting something wrong. Because, God forbid. <laughs> John, we have online simulators for it. Yeah, but I'm lazy. And I don't like... Alright, so here's... I might be... You call me old-fashioned. But I like practicing with actual physical cards. 
You know, I don't like using a a, a simulator online. It, it it's not the same. Like it, it's really and I, and I'm speaking as someone who played the Game Boy Advance Yu-Gi-Oh games and uh, some of the DS ones, but I can't use an app online to make proxy decks to practice and all that sort of shit or test out strategies. I, it's not the same to me. I'd rather have the actual physical cards in my hand and face someone I can look at in the eyes and see if they have a glass eye or not. <laughs> it's more genuine. Yeah, there you go, Cosmic. Yeah, there you go. Took away wrong mouth. Uh, critical. Uh, who's your favorite? Uh, who's your? I'm sorry. Who's your five character picks for the now announced Smash Brothers DLC pass? Ugh, I still haven't really had time to think about this since the live reaction yesterday. Uh, my my top two. Uh, one is one is Shantae because I I, I, w I would like to see her included in the game, and I'm already drawing a blank on the second character I already thought of. <laughs> well, fuck, that didn't last long. Oh, shit. I don't know. Like, I am so satisfied with this roster that there's no one else I'd rather... If nobody else was announced, I'd be perfectly fine with it. You know? Oh, Sora. Sora. Sora from Kingdom Hearts. That's the other character I would like to see in there. But that still leaves, like, three open spots. Broken control, Gino. If if Gino is in there, he's in there. If he's not, he's not. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those I don't care if he's in there or not. Banjo Kazooie. No, I I again I I never played Banjo. No, I'm not a fan of Banjo. Never played it. Uh, so that it, it, he they mean nothing to me. Yeah, you know because who knows? When I play Banjo at some point, I may end up loving it. So you know. Who knows? <laughs> the Grinch. <laughs> My uh, top pick, yeah. I I'm drawing a blank on it. I wouldn't even... I, I, I honest to God can't pick three other characters. Because I'm perfectly satisfied with the roster as is. Uh, JC Ultimate 113. John wanted to ask, what happened to the spotlight streams as well as round two? Scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Brain Scratch and SGB. Because they take up all my fucking time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the best I can tell you. I'm only one guy. I can only do so much at once. That's the, that's the best answer I can cook up. And uh, in terms of when things will get back to normal, and, and relatively speaking, I cannot give you a straight answer for that one. Uh, Spider Knife, okay. Hey John, have you ever considered doing art streams on Twitch? I would love to. Whether it's drawing for your own pleasure or drawing which app could suggest to you if you had the opportunity any idea to do a small animation akin to what you did for the Tales Sky Patrol Adventure review. I was I was tossing around this idea a couple weeks ago with you guys and you guys said you'd be down for it. And fuck man, if I had more time I would have done I would have done some Inktober art streams. Because Inktober I I fucking had to drop because I did not I did not have enough time for it you know because when <laughs> it didn't help that one one of the videos that I had to make for some call me Johnny was make him an X command mission an RPG and that took so much time because <laughs> it was an RPG then I had to get Resident Evil ready for brain scratch which I'm editing as well uh, I'm also I had to record Castlevania Symphony of the Night for SGB I'm also doing the Pokemon Crystal thing October was October was pretty busy. You know, I'm pretty happy about that, but you know, it's like I want to start these things, I want to do these other things as side projects and I have no time for them. You know? But an art stream I would love to do. You know, just to, you know, shoot the shit with you guys and to do requests as long as it's nothing lewd yet. <laughs> or uh, you know, just to just to warm up the old fingers. I would, I would, I would not mind doing that, but it depends on, it depends on the schedule because you know here's the thing, I would like to do more live streams, but I'm, I also need time for myself because there's, 
I do live streams on Mondays. I do live streams on Wednesdays. I do sub nights with you guys on Fridays. Sundays are for SGB. Brain Scratch, we shift between Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, and my... So far, like, my only free day of any sorts are Thursdays. And I really don't want to, you know, be doing something for either a, a channel or some other thing every single day of the week, you know? I need time off. I need to get away. And that's why I really cherish... <laughs> Uh, I really cherish the the time alone. A twin image. <laughs> do, you, do you actually? I do sleep. I sleep horribly most of the time, but I do sleep. All right, uh, M Gear. What are your least seven? What are your seven least favorite Pokemon? Which one would you banish into obscurity in a heartbeat? Now, I see. I don't. I don't. I don't do that kind of shit, dude. Uh, to be honest, because I. I don't hate. Pokemon enough to say that you should be banished to the Shadow Realm or Hithel because just because I'm indifferent to them doesn't mean it out, I don't outright like I mean I, I'm pretty sure you mean that question in jest but uh, it's more like I couldn't well first of all I couldn't give you seven because <laughs> uh, I you know I, I just don't care to learn all 700 plus Pokemon that are available nowadays you know, the most I'll do is I'll raise an eyebrow over their designs, but I don't outright hate them. Uh, 800 plus. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. So I would not banish them into obscurity in a heartbeat because I, if I don't like your design, I'm just like, eh, pass. I got 799 more. <laughs> I know Pikachu... Pikachu 2, <laughs> Pikachu 3. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, Twin Image, this is your question here on TC. Uh, in the recent Smash Direct, you voiced your disinterest in the inclusion of the spirits as a pseudo-replacement for stickers. As someone who personally loves the added variety and choice to improve on both the strong and weak points of a character, I am curious to know your in-depth thoughts as to why customization options such as spirits and ultimate moves are viewed not so positive light in your eyes, and Vanilla Smash truly the only way. Twin Image, I'm not, I'm not entirely against the idea of like spirits and what they do for a character, but to me, the my problem with them is that they are so niche that it won't matter in the long run. And unfortunately, it is very much a case of the custom moves in Smash Four, where if nobody else is using them then I'm not going to use them. And uh, honestly, I, I can't be bothered. Call me, a, uh, call me a basic bitch. Call me a simpleton. Call me whatever you want. But I play Smash. I, I play vanilla Smash because that's what I want in the game. You know, all the other extras, you know, like coin matches, stamina mode, uh, giant melee, tiny melee, metal melee, those are all there as fun little extras, but that's not how I play Smash. You know, I like playing basic Smash. I, I like stock matches. I like time stock matches. You know, and I'm surrounded by people who are like-minded, and I never really give them the time of the day. That, and when it comes to tournaments and, you know, gatherings, they're not, they're not uh, viable anyway. So I, I'm going to give them a shot, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm going to give Spirits a try, see who I can get out of it, maybe I'll have fun with it, that's great, but when it comes to just good old multiplayer Smash fights, regular vanilla is the way to go. I'm not saying it's the only way to go, but it's the one I prefer. <laughs> okay, uh... Alright, uh, Anthem Hero, John, I'm sure you're going to get tired of the questions involving Smash Ultimate, but I have to ask this one. Uh, if you can choose any character from a game not made by a company that already has representation in Smash, who would it be? If you can't just pick one, give me several. Wait, hold on a second. If you could choose any character from a game not made by a company that already has representation in Smash, who would it be? Oh, okay. Um, fuck, well, this just goes into... 
who would I like in Smash, basically. Because, again, I'm perfectly fine with the roster. There's no one else I can think of. You know, that whether or not they have uh, representation or not. Because, I don't know. I mean, how many characters does Smash Ultimate have now? DLC included? Like, the five DLC characters included, along with the final number on the roster, that's what? That's like 70, right? 70-something? That's a lot of fucking characters. It's close to 80. It's insane. That's a lot of fucking... That's more than Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which I thought for the longest time would have the largest roster that no other fighter would trump. Uh, I guess maybe Capcom vs. SNK 2? Capcom vs. SNK 2 had a lot of fighters as well. Uh, so, if I had to pick something, I don't... Never forget... Oh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Holy fuck. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't like the Tenkaichi series. Mujin doesn't count. <laughs> For God's sakes. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I guess... Alright, Cap... Uh, let's go Capcom uh, Resident Evil. Uh, how about Leon? Leon, Jill, Chris, one of those three. I wouldn't mind seeing in there. Yeah, no, Jill already got Marvel vs. Capcom, so I would say either... Oh, no, so did Chris. Uh, so, Leon. I would say Leon. Uh, Mega Man is Capcom. All right, well, fuck it. I'm still picking Leon anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I'm seeing a few repeated questions for some users. Uh, I want to get some. I want to get as many people in here as possible. So, uh, hold on, a Linky, shut up. <laughs> All right, uh, the Smallbringer is asking, "When are we going to see your dance tape? We want to see if some call me dancing. You guys already got my fucking dance tape at the end of the Chronicles review." <laughs> That, uh, I, I, I'm not lying, though. Doing that with the hoodie on wiped me out. Like, it wiped me the hell out. <laughs> there was, like, you guys, uh, you guys got about, like, uh, 10 to 15 seconds of dancing. There was, like, a whole minute of that that you guys didn't see. I was just doing different shit, and I, I picked the, I cherry-picked what I thought would be the funniest ones. Uh, so... You know, <laughs> ever, ever make the ever make the some call me Johnny like Blu-ray? You get the extra moves as an incentive uh, <laughs> as a bonus feature. <laughs> uh, Tunemish, thank you very much for the uh, the Twitch Prime sub, man. Eight months, almost got that baby ready. <laughs> we got your dance video on your dad video. You got a Broadway resume set. <laughs> well, I like to see a thing. That's yeah, pretty cool. All right, uh, Jade Halloween is dead. Fox, greetings, John. Since we've been getting people like Ryu, Cloud, Bayonetta, Simon, and King K, King K Cool in Smash Brothers, have our expectations for next Smash character so high that when expecting like someone like Banjo, Shadow, Genosaur, etc., and Piranha Plant, uh, it looks like the kind of question is kind of incomplete there, dude. Uh, but I think I may know where you're getting at. Um, well. well I want to ask you guys that as well. I mean, if this was the last Smash, it's it's not going to be, but if this was the last Smash game they ever released, would you guys be okay with that? Me personally, I don't think the series should ever stop, but after this, after Ultimate, this series needs to be put on rest for a good fucking decade, decade and a half, 20 years maybe. Because there is a sense of finality with Smash Ultimate. At least Sakurai's vision of Smash Brothers. That I feel you cannot follow up on just a few years later. For either Nintendo's next console, an update, whatever whatever have you. When Ultimate is done, when the DLC, all of it is released by 2020, Smash needs to rest for, like, a very fucking long time. I'm talking F-Zero long. <laughs> 
that way, whenever you decide to bring it back, you know, fans old and new can get really fucking excited for it. There'll probably be like a few more franchises you guys make over the set in time, and they get smashed representatives here and there. Captain Falcon has a long white beard. Still, Falcon punches people harder than I can. But I think after Ultimate comes out, Smash needs to be put to rest for a long time. Just put it in a time capsule. Dig it up in 2050. Because they're going all out for this one. And it, it wouldn't be wise, in my opinion, to try and follow it up immediately. Uh, Devin Bay. Uh, let me see here. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, Devin Bay. I'm not sure... Okay, uh, let me see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, okay, I lost it. There it is. Uh, weird question you mentioned. Uh, weird question. You mentioned you watched um, oh, oh, My Little Pony, uh, Friendship is Magic back in the day. What was your favorite main six character off the top of your head? Well, who are the main six? Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy. What's the name of the white one with the purple one? Rarity. It was Spike. Um, Pinkie Pie. Uh, who was the other one? Uh, Applejack. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the main six. What did I like? Applejack was okay. Rainbow Dash. I think I'd be, I think would be too obvious. Uh, but I did like her. Uh, Twilight Sparkle was kind of boring to me. Except that one episode where... There was one episode where she she kind of lost her fucking mind because I think she was um I think a deadline was approaching for like a journal entry or some other thing and as the day went on she became more and more unhinged and it was like it was very really zany animation that I thought was just incredibly fucking hilarious. I don't remember the name of the episode though. Uh but I thought like the uh the comedic timing in that episode was on was on point. I don't remember the name of the episode though. It was it was so long ago. Was it Lesson Zero, Hero Chaos Chow? Uh, was it thinking? I'm not sure. Don't ask me if it was season two, episode three, because I do not remember any of that. Uh, but uh, of the, the main six, I want to say probably Applejack and uh, probably Fluttershy. A borderline care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to need help with this one. Because I don't remember if it's... I know uh, C-Z-A-R is not pronounced Kaiser. Is it Kazar or Cesar or Caesar or Caesar? Ocelot. Because uh, I always forget how to pronounce the damn... Because I, I know good English. It's just Czar. Okay. So the C is silent. Now why the fuck is the C there? <laughs> you know that, that frustrates me god damn it <laughs> shazza <laughs> all right uh zara asala is asking are we just going to overlook the fact that fox pointed a gun at god and captain falcon pretty much wanted no part in this and tried to get the hell out of there? yeah i know captain falcon really was like fuck this <laughs> Like, oh, uh, he, he didn't even get... I mean, but isn't that the perfect analogy of how Nintendo treats the F-Zero series nowadays? <laughs> I'm going to get back in my car. <laughs> Nintendo's like, fuck you, Will. <laughs> and just disintegrates the son of a bitch. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's crazy, man. I think the the, uh, the boss's name is... I think it was uh, confirmed as Gleam. And um, is that a reference to something? I mean, is it um, is it Christian? Is it Catholicism? <laughs> is it Buddhism? <laughs> what is it a reference to? But um, I don't know. I, I mean, what do you guys think? It's a uh, what do you guys think? It's like its true nature is. Like, it has the wings, and it doesn't look like it has a like humanoid form. It just looks like a ball of energy with uh, wings. <laughs> it shot a fuck ton of light, yeah. Well, they you know they say that the uh, the balance between light and darkness 
is a very fickle thing. If you, you have too much darkness, then you have Kingdom Hearts. If you have too much light, then you... Uh, wait, what was the game that too much light was a bad thing? Uh, well, that was a plot point in Final Fantasy XIV, where the balance between light and darkness skewed so, fav so favorably towards light that it ended up obliterating the entire world of uh, Parallel Dimension, and that was quite sad. <laughs> Final Fantasy 3, before the game started, uh, uh, Sync, <laughs> nice cross to ultimate tweet you had there, oh, the, um, the Bahamut, the Bahamut video that I made yesterday, dude, I, when you, when I get moments like that, I try to jump on them right away because I'll lose it in a, in a, in a, in a like in, a, in an hour. Uh, so I, as soon as I got the, um, the discussion video out, I was like, I have to, I have to splice in the Bahamut Calamity stuff with that video. And, uh, I'm, I'm happy, like, a lot of the 14 community enjoyed it. Uh, that tea, blew, the, that tea, that tweet blew up. Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's move on here. Uh, Spark1048, what do you think of Mel Metal? Oh, Nutboy Plus. Uh, I, I mean... It's, um, what was the name of that damn, I don't remember if it was, uh, Reggie Steel, Reggie Ice, or that line of Pokemon. Was that Gen 4 or Gen 5? I don't remember. It basically, the, uh, uh, Melmetal looks like, uh, looks like them. Only it's, uh, you know, it's not. <laughs> it's Gen 3 and 4. Oh, I always thought they were just, like, from, oh, okay, it was Gen 3, but Gen 4 added more, okay. Yeah, my metal just looks like more of those, and, you know, that's okay. That's, you know, not much else I can say about that. I miss Nutboy, though. They sh I know, they'll, you know, we all gave it the nickname Nutboy, but I, I'm i still going to call it Nutboy. If I ever catch one, I'll, I'll nickname it Nutboy. I don't really nickname Pokemon in general, but I will call this one Nutboy. Uh, Sonic Titanic 23 asks, So with Ultimate confirmed to have DLC, will you at SGB be winning... So that comes out to do Smash Brothers Saturdays, or are you going to do it with the base roster? Uh, I'm sorry, base roaster. We're going to do it with the base roaster. Uh, no, we're not going to wait until the DLC comes out, because I love Smash Saturdays. And if we, <laughs> I don't want to wait until February of 2020 to bring those back. So, And we already have 70 characters as is. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that's more than enough time to... Uh, fuck, there's so many... <laughs> there are so many stages... In Smash Ultimate, that and, and we do Smash Saturdays, you know, every Saturday. The game will probably be finished, <laughs> all its DLC, when we get to the end of the game. So, I, I don't think it, it'd be wise to wait until the DLC comes, until, until record the game. Uh, that just doesn't seem wise at all. Uh, okay, uh, Scooter29, will you give alternatives to Smash a chance while waiting for Smash Ultimate to come out? No, because I, I, my backlog is already big enough as it is, and I gotta, I uh, gotta do other videos soon. So I have literally have no other time for any other, just, just recreational shit besides Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, and it's also only a month. <laughs> and you know, on the way to Smash Ultimate being released, I'm probably gonna be, you know, playing the older Smash game is just to get, you know, hyped up and all that sort of shit. Uh, Mystery Man 39, are there any review marathons that you had to scrap in the past? Marathons, huh? Uh, never scrapped, put on hold. Um, I've done that with, which I, I've technically been doing it with Pokemon for a couple of years now, because I've been wanting to do another Pokemon marathon since 2015, I want to say. But I just kept putting it back on the back burner because I figured, nah, I, I, you know what, I'm going to focus on this for now, I want to focus on that for now. A big thing about that in regard is the because I really want to start the next Pokemon Marathon with the Pokemon battle between Ted and I as a cartoon. You know what I mean? But that has its own problems of being a cartoon and they take a long time. And it wouldn't be like a full-fledged anime battle. I mean, we're not talking about a 22-minute episode of It'd probably be only two or three minutes long, but it'd be a very intense two or three minutes, and I want to put as much love and attention as I could on that piece. 
But I want to start the next Pokemon Marathon with that because that's where we ended the last Pokemon visit with. You know what I mean? That said, I also want to look at Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee when they come out because it's Kanto. I technically already reviewed Kanto, so why not? <laughs> and the Kirby Marathon timer has been reset. Well, I, I never uh, I never planned for it, so I, I can't cancel it if I never planned for it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the true enemy of the world of the light is Ted. Think about it. He killed everyone off, so John would do a curb marathon. It's funny you say that, Link Hayashi, because Ted actually did text me yesterday saying that uh, now you have to do a Kirby marathon because Kirby is the only one left. Uh, and then I retorted by saying that, oh, yeah, Kirby is the only one left. That means I can only review the first game and only up until I get to DDD because he did too. <laughs> so, uh... That Kirby Marathon wouldn't really be a marathon. It'd just be uh, one game and only uh, like three-fourths of it. Because <laughs> everyone's dead. Everyone is dead. Uh, Vertonga95 asks, Is there a video game series that you think needs a shift in focus like what Breath of the Wild did for the Zelda franchise? <laughs> a shift in focus. Hmm. Well, Resident Evil already did theirs. Metroid, I think, would need a shift in focus in terms of, like, making a solid, uh, just entry in general. Because, again, I, I really can't wait to see what they're doing for Prime 4. Because I would love for them to go back to Prime 1. Yeah, I, I would want nothing more than for them to just try and replicate Metroid Prime 1 with the, with high, with HD graphics and all that sort of shit. Because I would, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> but uh, for a shift in focus, I guess for the sake of giving it a breath of fresh air, I don't know. Because... What do you guys... I mean, what would you guys think? Uh, what series would need a shift in focus? Because... Odds are, if I'm, follow if I'm still following a series to this day, it's because I like what they're doing. And... I wouldn't be against the shift in focus, but it isn't the right thing to do. Sonic, <laughs> focus on good. Yeah, okay, I guess Sonic is probably the most obvious one, yeah. 3D Sonic in general. I, I would say, uh, not in general, but specifically. You know, because 2D Sonic, uh, I mean, 2D Sonic's pretty much in good hands at this point, assuming they keep the guys over at uh, Headcanon and Christian Whitehead aboard. But 3D Sonic, I think, needs to step back. Like, a lot of fucking steps back. It's like the, it's like the, uh, the Crush 40 song. Never, never, like, they, um, never, never turn back. No, fuck it, turn back. <laughs> and learn what worked before. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see here. Uh, Zafia, this is kind of a, a double question, but I'll, I'll, I'll quickly answer it. Uh, I think you, I think your videos, you, I think your videos as of late have been super funny. What is your process for integrating jokes into the script and how much retooling do you do to a script before the video comes out? So here's my thing. My thing is that I don't view myself as a comedian. I try to be funny, but I don't view myself as a comedian. Like I don't see myself ever doing stand up ever in my life. But if I think I can make a quip then I'll put it into the script. To me, my f to me, my best jokes, if you want to call them that, is stuff that I think spontaneously and it makes me laugh. Now, I hate saying that because it kind of makes me sound like I'm full of myself. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, this will sl <laughs> this will slay them. Titty sprinkles. <laughs> no, but if it comes to my head like immediately and I laugh at it. Then I put it into the script and see what people think. And more often than not, you guys laugh at it too. And I'm happy about that because it's just, oh, thank God, it's not just me. Uh, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's weird because I, that's kind of my thought process with it. But I hate saying it because it makes it sound like I'm full of shit. Uh, as In terms of retooling the script. So basically what it is is that I, I finish writing the script. I give it a once-over for typos, grammatical errors, all that sort of thing. And then the next day, 
I will reread it. Because it's rare that I write a script and record it the same day. It is really rare that I do that. Because by the, most of the time, by the time I'm done writing the script, I'm wiped out. And if there's one thing I hate doing, hate doing, I hate recording for a script when I'm tired. Because I know that I'm not putting my all into it. I'm probably slurring through my words. And a, what normally should be an hour and a half recording process is now three hours. And I hate the post-edit for that. Because that is so many fucking bloopers and screw-ups I'm editing out of. I hate it. But, uh... So what I do is I, I write the script. I get some rest. Wake up the next day. I got a fresh cup of coffee in my hand. And I... I look it over. And more... And that it, it helps me catching shit that I didn't elaborate on. Redundancies is a big thing for me. Like I, I, I'm pretty conscious about words that I use over and over and over again. Like I just did right there. <laughs> I feel maybe I can say this in a different way so that I don't come off as too repetitive. Although it is something I subconsciously think about all the time with every review. You know, especially w the longer the channel goes. I start to think about that more and more about, you know, is this review really just this review only replace Sonic with Mario? That kind of thing. But I also accept that that that's just it just comes to the territory when you're doing this thing for so long. You may be repeating yourself more than you want to, but y there's only so many times you can say, I really like how this character jumps in the air. <laughs> Yeah, true. Now it's more Linky's thing, but uh, I see what you guys are doing there. Yeah, I hate... Uh, again, it's one of my biggest things that I hate looking back on some of my older videos. Because I listen to myself and I think about that script and I was like, oh, I could have written that so much better. Like, I could have written this so much better. I could have hammered this point a little clearer. Or, you know, again, I was I was a bit of an AVGN tryhard back in the day. And, I mean, you, know, you learn from that and you grow out of it. But going back to it, it's like, eh, I could have written that better. <laughs> uh, to, all right, Kari, so someone explain this to me. Uh, so, uh, Torchy's profile pic is Pikachu with sort of like the mouth agape. Why did that suddenly blow up into a meme? You know that episode is like, God knows how old, like 20-something years old, I think, at this point. It's like, why is people suddenly now just catching up on it? <laughs> but, uh, hello, Johnny. Now that you've looked into two Castlevania games, Chronicles and Haunted House, do you plan on reviewing Marathon, the portable Castlevania games? Yeah, I want to look at... I want to look at the GBA games. I want to look at the... Uh, I guess I got to look at the Game Boy games as well. Uh, and I want to look at the DS games. I kind of want to do the 3D games first, though. Personally. Because... It would, it would uh, be a good excuse to play Castlevania 64, Legacy of Darkness, Lament of Innocence, Curse of Darkness, Lords of Shadow. Am I forgetting anything else? I don't count Judgment, because Judgment is not... Well, okay, it's 3D, technically, but... But I want to, I really want to take the time to actually go and play those because I have not touched most of those games. So I would say 3D stuff would probably come first and then I'll look at the handheld stuff. I <laughs> saw a link. Uh, hey Johnny, what are your thoughts on the Piranha Plant and the upcoming Smash game? Crazy, right? In case you already answered something like that, here's another. I know your stance on JRPGs and Johnny versus due to life, but if you had time, would you consider doing one for Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or 2? I would need to play your and beat Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or 2 before I even consider doing a review on them, because that I kind of don't want to record my first playthrough for Xenoblade 1 or 2 for a review, uh, because, I don't know, I wouldn't feel right doing that. But um, Piranha Plant confused the hell out of me. I mean, you guys saw it. If you guys saw the, my live reaction video yesterday, I was befuddled, to put it some way. And I've processed it, and it is very much the Sakurai thing to do. It is this game's Game & Watch, Rob, We Fit Trainer, and I've come to accept it, so whatever. I mean, it's not hurting anybody. Well, it's hurting Mario, but you know what I mean. So it's there. Not going to lose any sleep out about it.
Uh, Conley, first off, it's pronounced Haru. Okay, well, you think I care, man. <laughs> uh, second, why don't you love me like you love Super Metroid? Because uh, Super Metroid brings me happiness. Uh, Chaos Chow. You've been to MAGFest in the past, right? Yes. If so, what sort of things should I go to besides the concerts while I'm there? This will be my first MAGFest and I've heard great things. Also, I don't know if you have this game, but I got another copy somehow of Danganronpa 1 Plus 2 Reload, which has the first two Danganronpa games in it. If you don't have it, would you be interested in a game donation? Uh, Cash Out, um, I, I wouldn't be against it. I don't have a P.O. box uh, anymore. But if you ever run into me in a convention, sure. I mean, I don't mind. I've heard uh, Nora tells me good things about the Danganronpa series, especially because I play Ace Attorney. Um, so I, I wouldn't be against the idea. Uh, but your MAGFest question. Uh, it depends on what you go to a convention for, honestly. I, I, I personally go to... I love going to conventions for the vendors and any panel ideas that, you know, pique my interest. But that's about it, though. If you're... It hurts if you're not into the concerts, because that's a big part of MAGFest. So if you're not there for the music part of it, then you're probably better off not going for all four days. You can probably get everything done in one day, and you'll be done. Uh, but um, hey, I'm hoping to see you there, because I'm going myself. Uh, Deactry. I'm pretty, I, you know, Deactry, I see your name all the time, and I'm, not, I'm never sure how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Deact. It looks like it's pronounced Deactry. Because I'm trying to like, equate it to some other word. But anyway. Got here late. You might have answered this. But what do you think of... Uh, what do I think of Deltarune? Oh, yeah. I just noticed your profile icon is of the uh, that one kid. Uh, so, uh, I read that I read that post that Toby Fox made uh, last night. Concerning the process of making Chapter 1. And it confirmed one thing that I thought the game was. Uh, because I mentioned uh, yesterday... That the one thing I loved and hated about my experience with Deltarune is that there was this feeling of tension in the air. That things were familiar and yet they weren't. But it wasn't... And it, and it egged me on wondering, what's wrong with this world? This world is similar and yet different. They're mentioning characters from the games, but they're not of the same caliber. So... Is this a prequel? Is it a, par a is it a parallel dimension? Is it a similar world to the first game? It only it's you know things are slightly different. And what Toby Fox pretty much said confirmed my suspicions that it's pretty much a parallel dimension. And it's interesting to use that as a way to tell a different story with the same characters but what kind of other story would you would you tell with that you know you know what I mean it's like do you use that as an excuse to make the story you really wanted to tell even though I thought I think Toby Fox did everything he wanted to say with the original Undertale or is this just I don't know. There are so many things up to interpretation in Deltarune that it's it drives you nuts because this this game is only a couple of hours long and for all we know it could just be a proof of concept because if the developer notes are anything to go by, this game is nowhere near close to being finished yet. And it could be completely different by the time it's, you know, completed. If it gets completed at all. So, what is the game here? Like, is it a parallel world? Are we going to try and tell a different kind of meta story? I mean, I love the the new gameplay. The gameplay I thought was great. It wasn't boring. I love the fact that they're introducing spells. I love that there are multiple ways you can spare enemies now. Uh, like, every character has a purpose, and I dig that. The music is fantastic. You know, uh, it, it's really rare that a soundtrack clicks with me instantly because uh, it's like a 20 second long piece. But the song that plays when you're entering your character name uh, that just immediately gets discarded because her, her, I love that theme. The character creation theme 
I fucking love that song. It's called yeah, it's called Another Hymn, uh, Blue Dragon 15. That is such a oh, good fucking song, and it's not even really a song. It's just noise, <laughs> but it's so atmospheric. I fucking love that song. But the battle theme is great. The overworld stuff is great. Uh, the the castle themes, the dungeon themes. Um, it is. If the rest of the game is like that, that is just that Delta Rune's gonna be great. But I am more intrigued by what kind of story it wants to tell. But I can't, I can't say for sure yet because again, it's just a demo. It, it, even then, it may not be a demo. It could be just an entirely different thing, and who knows? I don't know. Uh, another hem has a to the Gastro's theme and Giga style music. Oh, okay. Uh, huh. I would have to listen back to that one because I don't remember what Gaster's theme was in Undertale, and fuck Gygas, I don't, I don't remember much in Earthbound at all, uh, except for a couple of things. But I don't remember much of Earthbound soundtrack. <laughs> a nutter. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Sink Raider joining Lincoln and I as Elites and Ultimate. Like I said, hey, look at this motherfucker putting himself in the Elites. <laughs> I hope your ass gets handed to you by someone I don't know. <laughs> uh, I can see you playing as Richter. I want to play as Richter. Because uh, he he's my favorite Belmont. Next to Simon. Uh, Alright, Trap Guy, how often do you find yourself scrapping a project and a review, or at the very least scrapping a script to start over? Uh, I think I've got this question in the last Q&A, but I'll, I'll answer it again. The only the only script I ever scrapped was uh, a video for Sonic Runners. Uh, if w It was the Endless Runner on mobile phones. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I wanted to review that game just a couple of weeks after it was released, because I legitimately liked the game. I, I really liked the game. I thought it was a good time in the shitter, and I wanted to spread the word about it. But I got the script done, but I couldn't get it ready for PAX because uh, I, I wanted to get the video done before I left for Boston, and it ended up not working out. And then by the time PAX was over, I had to... I think I had to focus attention on a sponsored video. I don't remember what it was. I'm trying to think, uh, around that time frame. It was April of 20, 2015, 2014, one of those two. Uh, and I ended up neglecting the Sonic Runner script so long that the game was eventually discontinued. And then I figured, oh, you know what? Fuck it. And now I'm just scrapping that script altogether. <laughs> so the, that's pretty much the, uh, the only time I ever did anything like that. Uh, MTS Master Johnny, have you ever considered playing Golden Sun? Not even for review, just for fun. All three games are insanely good. Uh, so I hear, NCS Master. But again, it's just another thing. It's just a thing that... I, it's all a matter of time. Uh, I've seen Golden Sun in action on the GBA, but I've never had the interest to just pick it up myself. And every time I hear the word Golden Sun, I keep thinking, I want a bowl of honey bunches of oats. <laughs> it, it wants me... It, it makes me want cereal for some fucking reason. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Black Dino Thunder Ranger. Hi, Johnny. Would you play Crash Bash with Matt and Elliot? We already did. It's on SGB. The entire game. <laughs> I think we did the entire thing anyway. But yeah, we did. We, we played a considerable number of Crash Bash videos on SGB. Just type in SGB plays Crash Bash. SGM, uh, what are you looking forward to in Smash Bros. Ultimate that is not characters? I uh, just, I just beating the shit out of friends and family and Twitch subs. <laughs> uh, Mick, what headset do you use and what input do you use? Uh, USB or XLR? I used to use USB all the time, uh, but I use XLR now because uh, it's it it just sounds better to me. At least I think it does. It could be totally placebo, but uh, yeah, I use uh, XLR. Uh, the headset itself, this is an Audio-Technica broadcast uh, mic. These aren't cheap. These are like, this is like $200. Uh, I got this a couple of years ago, and we got four of them for SGB, but that was like after months of saving, because I, I, I've, 
I got so sick of the USB headset quality that we used to rely on back in like 2011, 2012. That I was like, you know what? I think it's time that I just start saving up and start and like invest in a mixer and some honest to god broadcast quality headsets. And I found these. And then I saw, fucking hell, these are two hundred dollars a pop. Um, all right, well, better get to saving. <laughs> and eventually, the money was right, and uh, I ended up getting these. But these are pretty much uh, these are. I, I, I love this headset. Uh, but a headset is only part of the equation, you know, because you got to get a mixer, and if you really want that fancy quality shit, you also got to get into a compressor. You got to invest in a compressor, uh, which I I seriously need for my mixing because I love the headset, but when I peak, it's really obvious, and I hate doing that. You know, whatever. Uh, ideally, I would love how Ben has his place set up for when we do the. Uh, the extra live charity streams. If you go back and listen to the Mario Mania highlights for last year's extra live charity stream, that was with Ben's radio uh, radio station set up at his place, and I love the voice quality of everyone in that one. Like I sounded good, Ben sounded good. We had the soundboard. I want that setup, but that setup looked like a fucking nightmare to just get ready. Yeah, it turns basement into a radio station. Hey, man, if I had a little more space here for, like, uh, compressing and sound, you know, because the tablet takes this entire table up here. Uh, I would love to, like, do a little research on the right kind of compressor to invest in, uh, interfaces and all that sort of shit. But, uh, you know, I it's a matter of research and time and money. Uh, okay, Bruce, uh, would you consider reviewing the Hitman game series since you're a fan of stealth games? Eventually. That's all I can say, honestly. Okay, Hitman is, uh, I've been familiar for a long time, but I never really had any interest, so I, all I can say is eventually. Uh, King Arthur 13. Uh, this is, a, it's kind of a, a deep question, uh, but it's a question, uh, nonetheless. John, have you ever had an existential crisis, or crises, as in multiple instances of them? Uh, yeah, uh, in fact, uh, when my first big panic attack, you could say, that I have memories of in some capacity was as early as 17 years old. Uh, I don't, I don't know what caused it, but I just got a real bad case of death anxiety. Because of the unknown factor of, like, what happens? What happens when you pass away? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Is there anything beyond the life we live now? And, you know, it's something that you you keep in the back of your head. But every once in a while, it creeps up on you. And most of the time, it would creep up on me while, while I was on the bed. No music on in a dark room by myself those are the those are the worst spots to get it and every and every once in a while I'll still get them it sucks because no matter how many times you can convince yourself you still shake a bit you might even cry a bit because you don't know what's you know you don't know how long any of us have to live you don't know you know what lies beyond the unknown, if anything at all. Maybe nothing happens, and we just crumble into a pile of dust. Return to the earth, as what a lot of people say. And I'm at a point in time where if they, if those kind of thoughts do creep up on me, I just try my damnedest to convince myself that it's only temporary. Because I'm not going anywhere you know, now. You know. Unless I'm having a heart attack, then yeah, I'm probably going somewhere soon. <laughs> and it sucks, but I've accepted it that it's a natural part of life. Because I don't think there's anybody in this planet that doesn't have a fear of death or fear of the unknown. But people have are different in handling it. You know, I think it's a big reason why people find faith, you know, to make themselves feel better. Not so much that they're yearning to 
you know, pray to a, a, a cosmic being, but it's to make themselves feel better. And I won't judge you if that's the case. Everybody has different ways, ways of going about this or that. And if that's how you want to do it, then go right ahead. I just try and convince myself that whatever happens, happens. I can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. And uh, I should probably get that second Pokemon Marathon ready to go before I uh, bite it. <laughs> when you're dead, Justin's are another quarter. <laughs> I wish. You gotta live life to the fullest. That's the usual saying. It's cliched as fuck. But it's the only thing you can do that, you know, means anything because yeah you really don't know you don't really nobody knows nobody knows so i it's not worth dwelling on it but when you do you get you got to convince yourself that it's only for a minute live for today look forward to tomorrow well i mean usually the saying is live today like there's no tomorrow but uh, i can't do that because i i i only have so much energy i'm a fat fuck <laughs> so <laughs> if i'm going to die tomorrow i'm going to be exhausted Uh, any, uh, Otaku, any plans for a race with your Twitch subs? Doesn't matter what game. Uh, so Twitch was talking about integrating that one thing where you get, like, multiple feeds in one screen without having to use multi-Twitch. When that thing is fully integrated by, to, by next year, I think was the plan, I will think about it because I would love to start doing that. I'm not a speedrunner, but I like racing. Uh, and I would like to start doing that more. Also, I'm sorry if, like, you know, that, the whole existential crisis thing was got a little deep, but, you know, it was, the, it was an honest-to-God question from King Arthur 13, and I, I feel, I, I feel it was, it was okay to answer that sort of thing, because you, you don't learn anything by not acknowledging it, you know? So, I, and I, and if, if anything, it feels good to talk about it, because bottling up inside is the last thing you want to do. It's better to be explosive than implosive, unless the explosive side of you has a gun. Then it's better than probably just, you know, play a game. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Austin, have you... Uh, hey, John, when is SGB going back to Mega Man? Uh, so, we'll, we have to do Mega Man 4, and I'm probably... I don't know. At some point or another, because... I know the only game that... Somebody else ever called was Matt, and he wanted to play Mega Man 8. eight. Uh, besides that, classic Mega Man is entirely on me, so it's a, it's just a matter of when I feel like going back to 4. Uh, but I gotta record it, edit it, because it'll probably be a solo playthrough. And, um, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Ryan the Reviewer, when do you plan to stream some Ultimate? Uh, sh as soon as I get all the characters unlocked. That was when I was... Uh, that's what I said to myself. I'm gonna wait until I get everything unlocked, and then I'm gonna start doing... Uh, Sub nights with Twitch subs. And uh, get some ultimate action going on there. Uh, do you think we'll get more DLC after the five characters in Smash Ultimate? No. I think they're pretty animate on that. I don't think we're ever going to get anything else after that. Uh, Blue Dragon, has anyone ever approached you to do any form of work on their game or web series? Uh, on occasion, but not that often. I mean, it, it, one of the things I like doing is I like to, uh, when I'm going to, especially like uh, like too many games or packs, I like to visit a lot of the indie booths and pick up their business cards so that I have something that could potentially look at for either myself or a spotlight video in the future. But uh, either A, I forget about it, or B, uh, it's just, I don't, I don't have the time for it. But uh, only on occasion I'll get someone approaching me to do something, and it depends on the game, honestly. Because if it's like an obvious infringement on something else, then I just kind of stay away. You know, I don't want to look at a bootleg. <laughs> uh, Edge of the Hedge, is there any game franchise except for Sonic that you've lost all hope for? Nah. I don't want to be that pessimistic to say that a franchise is dead. Because fucking Bubsy's back. <laughs> doesn't matter whether you want the franchise to die or not it's gonna keep going on whether you want to or not uh 
So, no, I don't. I don't. I tend not to lose hope for anything. You know, because uh, you never know; it might get better. And it's not like I don't. You know, to use Sonic Egg as an example, even though you said except for Sonic, I'll use Sonic Egg as an example because fuck you, I do what I want. Uh, if the Sonic game, if the, if the next Sonic game does poorly, then it's not like I'm going to be in a depression until the next Sonic game. No, it just means I'm going to play something else until another Sonic game comes out. Know what I mean? <laughs> it just means like, well, all right, I'm going to play something else. That's pretty much how I, I come with it. I don't want. I don't want a franchise to die. I, I, I'll, I'll just wait until it makes another good game. Uh, what was one of my biggest regrets when it came to buying games? Biggest regret. Biggest regret. Biggest regret. Biggest regret. Let me see. Uh, Rascal. Rascal on PS1 was a regret. Um, what else was a regret? Was this something else? I don't remember. Not big rigs, because I don't remember how. I don't remember how I ran into big rigs. Hmm. Sonic and the Black Knight, probably. Yeah. Because <laughs> I paid full price for that. Sonic, uh, Sonic Boom. I mean, I had to. Uh, yeah, I guess I would regret the purchase, but I got it anyway because I knew I had to review it. Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, if we're being honest, that is the end-all be-all. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV because I wasted so much hours on it. But I have so many memories <laughs> of me wasting my time on that game. I'm going to be sad as fuck when that game stops. Uh, are there any games you feel are criminally underrated? Criminally underrated? I'm going to keep saying Brave Friends of Musashi until I fucking die. <laughs> but I understand that game's not for everybody. And I would love to see a remaster of that game. You know, Square had me going for a bit when they acknowledged that game's 20th anniversary. And I thought, holy fuck, are we going to get like a PS Store re-release? Or maybe it's hints for a remaster? Uh, but no, it doesn't look like they did anything with it. And it's just acknowledging the game's 20th anniversary. And I was like, fuck me. I would love... Another Brave Friends of Musashi game. A true follow-up to Brave Friends of Musashi because Samurai Legend Musashi is just, it's just not what I was looking for. It looked okay, but the music wasn't that good and I didn't like the gameplay as much. It didn't have as much charm. So, uh, I'll wait. Brave Friends of Musashi. I like that. A lot of people ask you if you review Triple X game, but are there any games you like to point out that you never intend to review for A or B reasons? Any games you like to point out that you never intend to review for A or B reasons? A game that I would never review for any reason? I don't know. I think it depends on the type of game it is. Like, alright, so, alright, I guess in... in one example I can think of, a fan of mine donated to me a, a train simulator game. Actually, hold on, I'll, I'll show it up right now to, to show you what, what I'm talking about. Uh, one second here. You guys, my hair's a bit ruffling. Yeah, um, I didn't write his name in the back of the box. Uh, I, I do that with donations. Uh, a fan of me donated to me this train simulator. Uh, TS 2015 train simulator from Dovetail Games. This is something, like, this is exactly what it sounds like. This is a, it, this is, you learn how to operate a train as if it was a real life train. Don't you need, like, an engineering degree for that sort of shit? Yeah. 
a part of me would like to do it because it was a donation after all, and I do want to show my respect, but it's also a simulation, and I don't know. It depends on what you're simulating. If it was oral sex simulator, and if I was on the receiving end, <laughs> then maybe, that, uh, but... I don't know. It's like it's a, it's. I guess it's a case by case basis. It's not something that it's not in my comfort zone. It's way out of my comfort zone, and I'm not sure if I would, if I would ever consider it. I'm not sure. YouTube Simulator 2018. I'm I'm living that life right now. <laughs> you pumping in the full gear and crashing or going too fast around the corner? Well, yeah. I guess you know. You know, Train Simulator is my favorite roller coaster tycoon game. If you were a view shovelware, would it seriously be called Johnny KOs? <laughs> Johnny KOs this game, yeah. It's if I really fucking hate the game. Uh, okay, Damon Scar, were there any fictional characters in some form of media you enjoyed that died and you had a general emotional reaction to their death? Yeah, at this uh, at the um at the risk of sounding cliche, Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, even though, you know, 7 wasn't my first Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy 4 was, and characters died left and right in that game. They never stayed dead, but they died. <laughs> you know, you know Tella, you know, died for real, and that was, that was pretty sad. But Aerith was the first character in a video game that I played that stuck with you for a good fucking while. In comparison to what I played beforehand, you got to know her, you got to know her personality, and then she gets stabbed in the back. And then the way the events transpire afterwards, where she falls down, the white materia falls off of her hair, uh, hair band, how, how that works, her theme starts playing, and that theme proceeds throughout the Genova life fight, and then the characters react to it, and then Cloud lowers Aerith into the bottom of the uh, the lake, you know, I was only 10 years old when I first played 7, and that hit me, like, really fucking hard. I mean, a lot of people brought it up, because, you know, 7 was a lot of people's first RPG, but to me personally, as a, as, as a, I was, as a fan of Final Fantasy already at that point, I, I felt generally, I, I felt really bad just for Aerith, because I, I grew to like that character. Uh, I used her all the time in, in, in the game previously because she was White Mage. I love White Mages. And it, it really struck a chord with me. And again, music direction was everything in that death too. That's why I love Nobu Matsu. Uh, Celeste is more emotional than Aerith to me. I think Celeste is more tragic, given that if events transpire in a certain way, she tries to kill herself, and that is horrifying, but I feel you get to know Aerith more. I love Celeste, don't get me wrong, and Celeste has a pretty rough upbringing, but I feel in terms of an emotional connection, I connect more with Aerith than I do Celeste. Celeste, I feel, is certainly more tragic, but not... Not as emotional, if that makes any sense. I, I have to think about that. <laughs> E.G. Flood. <laughs> Flood from Mario Sunshine. <laughs> the top ten <laughs> uh, best character deaths in, a, in an anime, I guess. Uh, John, what's a video game soundtrack that you hold near and dear to your heart... That you don't think most people know about. Music in general is something that helps me carry on and give me purpose. So I love to discover new music or soundtracks from other people. Thank you for all you do, by the way. Heart. Uh, in parentheses, edited. Which means that could have been a Nazi symbol. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, a soundtrack that I hold near and dear to my heart. That you don't think most people would know about. So I gotta think about like my I don't know, niche experiences. Uh, 
No, not Chrono. Uh, not not Chrono Cross. <laughs> uh, see the emote, by the way. Added to that, yeah. <laughs> Think party. <laughs> uh, let's see. God, I don't know. I had to think about that because a lot of video game music that I love, you guys probably already know about it because I gush about video game music all the time. I love video game OSTs. I love good video game OSTs. You know, it's one that I hold near and dear to my heart that not people know about. I don't know. I honestly, God, I can't think about that. I can't think of it because you guys know my love of Sonic, my love of Final Fantasy. Uh, train simulators OST is a bang. <laughs> I don't know. I'm honest to God drawing a blank. Uh, Legend of Valkyrie, I guess. That That's not... There's not a lot of emotional variety in that soundtrack, but as an old-school arcade top-down game, uh, it, it, the soundtrack is pretty damn great. You guys ever played Legend of Valkyrie? Like the Namco game? Uh, I, I recommend that soundtrack. Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer Revolution. Those were also pretty good. Brave Fence and Musashi. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if we're going to pick the safe answer, sure. Because Brave Fence and Musashi's music is great. Yeah, if you ever get the chance, uh, look up uh, Legend of Valkyrie. I have Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, <laughs> I guess, I suppose. Because <laughs> that's the only good thing about that game is the music. Uh, Silverdew, what would you say is the craziest challenge you have ever attempted? For example, how someone beat Dark Souls with the DK Bongos. <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't do something like that. But, um... The craziest challenge you ever attempted. Probably Kingdom Hearts Level 1 Proud Mode. <laughs> oh, you know, off of what I've done personally, you know? You know, because don't ask me to ever play a, don't ask me to ever play a game blindfolded or, you know, play upside down. Well, I guess Symphony of the Night kind of makes you do that. But the Kingdom Hearts Level One Prod Mode that was like something in and of itself. You know, because I learned there was a lot of things about that playthrough that opened my eyes in terms of how this and that battle worked, and I that's what I loved about it. But I also found out that I am not very good against Ursula. <laughs> Level 1 proud mode. And you know what? A lot of people just tend to skip Atlantica altogether. And I don't blame them. Because... That fight fucking sucks. <laughs> but I, I, I generally only do crazy challenges on games that I have played to death and I just want some sort of variety on it. Just for shits and giggles. You know what I mean? Uh, do you guys have, uh, have you guys ever done like a crazy challenge over a game you, you, you love to death? Just to see if you can do it. You know, because uh, Kingdom Hearts Level 1 Proud Mode is one for me. I did a Resident Evil 4 run using nothing but the knife and handgun. Like the basic handgun. Um, I'm trying to, I was thinking one other thing. I did Fists Only in Symphony of the Night. Three heart smoke for Breath of the Wild. Yeah, three heart challenges. That's uh, that's that's one thing people like to do with Zelda games. Armorless, uh, armorless X three. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Nuzlocke challenges. Yeah, I, I I I wouldn't mind doing that, but I also if I <laughs> if I do a Nuzlocke Pokemon challenge, I do my damnedest to make sure <laughs> I get Pokemon. I don't give a shit about. <laughs> Because, fuck, I ain't letting a Raichu die in a Nuzlocke. I'd end the game right there. <laughs> then my Raichu passes away, and then my, then my character figured, you know, life's too short. <laughs> and then he just retired from Pokemon training in general. At some point in my life, Lilac, I would like to do an Excalibur 2 run of Final Fantasy IX. That is the only thing I have not done in that game. I've done literally everything else in that game. Except get Excalibur 2. Because... I, I, I want to I, I enjoy the game. <laughs> but you have to skip so much shit. 
And if I would, oh, see, I, I'm down to watch Excalibur 2 run 10 elements. I would assume that I would live stream it, though. Because <laughs> I'm a dumbass when I live stream. And I wouldn't be able to speed run it. Uh, what is the weirdest thing you saw in a game? Okay, I can't pick just one, but I can pick a... I can get an example. Uh, just weirdest thing I ever saw in a game? Uh, Hotline Miami doesn't count. That's literally a drug trip. Hey, totally not Mitch. Thank you for all the gift subs. Look at that. Look at Mitch there. Just handing him out like fucking coke. <laughs> That's really nuts. It's like, how many, like, fuck, how many gift subs is that? That's like, was like, five? Yeah. They gifted a total of 20 for the channel. This motherfucker spent like $100. I'm just giving people just gift subs. Okay, well, hold on a second. Well, if you guys synchronize your Twitch accounts and your Discords, <laughs> I'll do a force sync before this is all over. Uh, we'll, we'll be ending in about like a few minutes anyway. Weirdest thing I saw in a game... Uh, one example I can think of is the credit sequence of... Uh, it's, it's a weird pool, but... The credit sequence in Rondo of Blood, when he finished the game, was Maria. One of the car one of the staff just has a random baboon in their credits name. And that, that red ass is just staring you in the face. Like, it just shows up. And is like... What? <laughs> But that is, uh, that's just one thing I could think of at the, at the top of the moment. <laughs> Where's thing I see in the game? Linky playing Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> oh, you're really generous, totally not Mitch. If you're not totally, if you're totally not Mitch, then I mean, who do we call you? Alright, uh... Uh, Lilac, you're asking, are there any games you would want to redo? Either it's been remastered, such as Crash, or just because of the better stuff you have now. Uh, a game I would like to redo? Uh, for SGB, I would love to redo Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, because we did that on the original PS2 version, and immediately after we finished it, Final Mix was... The HD Final Mix was announced. And, quite frankly, I, th I thought I could play that game a little better for SGB. And now that I've done level 1 prob mode, I feel like there's nothing I can't do <laughs> in Kingdom Hearts 1. So I would love at some point in my life to redo that. But that's that's not a priority. The Tales of Symphonia, fuck, not out of here, no. Alright, so I'm assuming totally not Miss just hit the lottery. <laughs> you think I'm joking, and that's the problem. <laughs> Don't test me, bitch. <laughs> totally not bitch. <laughs> I can't stop him. He's too powerful. <laughs> totally not meant to spreading the load, and that load's going all over your face, neck, and chins, guys. On no, not November. So I, you know, <laughs> totally not meant to say. I think I think you failed. No, not November, my man, or uh, a girl. I don't know who you are. Because <laughs> if you're not Mitch, then you're probably not Mitch. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if this is a... Alright, Chaos Yoshi. Uh, you're not sure if this is an appropriate time or place to ask this. I mean, the question's a question, dude. Uh, but do you have any advice for anyone new to live streaming? Uh, I mean, it depends on... What do you want to do as a live streamer? Do you want to live stream, you know, video games? Do you want to live stream, you know, tutorials? Makeup products? Critiques, reviews, all that sort of thing. You gotta find your niche first. You gotta find your comfort zone. I would say it's probably really important. And then you just go about it. If you can, network. Try and get connections. Either just by, you know, printing out flyers. <laughs> Handing them out at conventions and other shit. You know, the old-fashioned stuff. And you just keep going at it. You know, the, the biggest... The, I think the biggest hurdle... That a lot of people have when it comes to starting out is that they don't have the patience to let the channel grow. They start a review channel or a live stream channel, and then a few months later, they still wonder why they only get single digit views. And it's like, 
what I tell them is that it, it doesn't work that way. Like, it takes a long fucking time. Unless you get lucky. I mean, and it does happen. I mean, let's be real. It does happen. You might get lucky. You might get you might get that viral take. And people are tuning into your channel because they happen to like it. And then there you go. You got your platform. You got your foundation. But most of the time, it doesn't work that way. And if you got the passion for it, then it's not a problem. You don't notice that sort of thing. So you keep going at it, and eventually, one day, hopefully, <laughs> it explodes. Or you get some traction. And then, if you're smart, you capitalize on that traction. But you can't expect it to go from 0 to 100 right away. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way for anything, no matter what you do. Unless you're rich. Unless you're, you're born rich. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Can we hit 50,000 likes? <laughs> or yeah, you can make Fortnite videos. I mean, if you want to if you want to hit the current tree. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that is that is a viable strategy. Like if you if you just jump on current trends, you'll make I, I guess you'll make a quick buck for that current trend, but you'll also date your channel horribly once that game goes out of focus. You know, I, I, it's why I feel kind of bad for those that like make a channel on this one thing specifically, and then a few years later, nobody fucking watches your channel anymore. You know what I mean? It's like when everybody when everybody jumped on Minecraft years ago and um when everybody jumped on terraria i was like yeah i mean i mean you guys are booming now you know that's great you got this community but it fucking leaves and your channel shrinks and it's depressing like it really is it's the and i don't that's why i don't want to do that i i mean the, the most i'll do because, you know, to just let you guys know right now, uh, just like a bit of a heads up, one of the games I'm going to review before the year's end is Fortnite. I'm going to review Fortnite uh, before the year's end because, one, it's the smart thing to do business-wise, and secondly, it's for my cousins. Because uh, my cousins, Luch and Dominic, Luch is like six years old and Dom is like ten, they watch my channel. They are subscribed to Some Call Me Johnny. And they fucking flaunt it everywhere they go, and I can't stand it <laughs> because uh, my my um, my cousin uh, she brought she brought them over for Halloween a couple of days ago, and Luch and Dom brought their friends, their two friends, and they were here in this office, and they're pointing out they're pointing on my YouTube plaque, my gaming shelves. They were just saying that I'm this famous YouTuber, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I was like, I ain't Markiplier big. I was like, I ain't this guy, I ain't that guy. But that, you know, oh, I feel like such a piece of shit. <laughs> but if they watch my channel, I have to thank them for that. And they love Fortnite. Oh my god, they love Fortnite so much. Especially Dom. Dom loves the fuck out of Fortnite. So I figured, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Again, it's for them, and it's also the smart thing to do business-wise, because Fortnite is so fucking hot right now. You know, that's a sweet paycheck. You know. But that's the cynical business side of things, you know. That's, that's the shit I don't like to elaborate on, because... It makes me sound more of a shill the more I talk about it. But when you're when you're making a channel and you want to gain traction, those are the things you kind of have to think about. You know, you you can't you can't make a channel off Star Tropics and then wonder why a year later no one's watching your shit. <laughs> but enough about Antu. You know, it, it, those are the things you have to keep thinking about if you want to grow the channel. Uh, but, you know, that's also just one category. 
Yo, totally not Mitch. All right, I'm assuming these are all fake gift subs. <laughs> these aren't these aren't real. <laughs> Wait, these are printed on graham crackers. <laughs> That's really nice of you, uh, totally not Mitch. Re it really is. I'd give you a round of applause, but I don't know what the uh, clap emoji is uh, on the chat. But if you guys just want to go ahead and spam like fucking claps in the chat, go right ahead. I ain't going to stop you. Nightbot's not up. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, try when you finish a long review, do you find yourself resenting the game for a while, trying to avoid it? Uh, I'll stop playing it for a while, yeah, sure. I don't resent the game, unless it sucked. You know. I guess Metal Gear Solid V. But, um... I, but, I, you know, Metal Gear Solid V was really good, gameplay-wise. Just the story sucked, and it was 50 hours long. <laughs> well, close to 60 hours long, anyway. And I resent the length, sure, but I don't resent the game. But I will generally avoid it after reviewing it. Except for 14. Which I just kept playing. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Give my show tier one sub, dude. Two months in a row. Review whatever game you want. I can't. What is that? A turtle? Is that a turtle head? It looks like a sock. Uh, Swan Panizzi. I know you said you played Sonic Runners, but have you ever played Runners Adventure? If so, what are your thoughts on that one? No, I've not played that one. Is that still there? Has that been canceled too? Because uh, I have not. I have not played that one. Any advice for someone who has... Uh, Taku's asking, any advice for someone who has self-hatred? You don't need to answer this one if you don't want to. Again, the ellipses... Alright, listen. This is just a personal pet peeve of mine. And, uh, you know, it's just like... You, you remember how uh, you guys talked about how uh, I, I hate the word, I hate K, the letter K, as a response. Uh, there's one thing that, it's too late Otaku, I saw it. <laughs> you edited the comment, but I see it anyway. I hate when someone adds an ellipses at the end of their sentence. Because, call me cynical, but I feel like you're, you try to, you're trying to, you know, try and guilt me into trying answering the question even though that might not be your intention at all it's just what i keep thinking about but to answer your question uh any advice for someone who has self-hatred i mean that hmm. no i can't because i don't know who you are and i don't know what your life is i don't know what it is you do in life I don't know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's none of my business. So the best thing I can tell you to do if it gets really bad is you get help. You know? Get therapy. Get counsel uh, counseling. That's the best thing I can tell you to do. Because I don't know who you are. Uh, and I'm not going to... I'm not about to be the person that tells this person what to do or how to live their life when I have no control of... You know, I have no control. I have no right to do any of that. That's my two cents on that one. The only thing I can tell you as a human being is if it gets bad, you should seek some help. And there's no shame in doing so. Because if you can't help yourself, then maybe it's it's wise to have someone do it for you. Now, I'm not talking about, like, you know, someone's going to wipe in your ass or some other shit. But maybe consider getting therapy. Or counseling. You know, I know a lot of people that do it, and it helps them get by. So if it helps them, it can help you. <laughs> I don't know you, that's my purse. <laughs> we all have some sort of uh, self hatred. Uh, no, because I'll debate that, Cosmic. I don't hate myself. I have, at times, I have low self-esteem but I don't hate myself you know because I feel if I ever got to that point I failed as I failed personally because I 
me, it's hard to put into words. Uh, I'm trying to explain my philosophy and all that sort of thing. Because to me, my philosophy, well, my philosophy is really no different than what a lot of parents tell their kids back in the day is like, treat others the way you would like to be treated. You know, I try to be nice when I can, but I also don't like bullshitters. I also don't like bullies. I also don't like, you know, manipulators. So I think, because I've seen all that growing up and I can pick them out from a crowd nowadays and it drives me nuts, but yeah, I also don't like to start confrontations. <laughs> you see, you, you see my pickle here. I don't know. It's weird. And I feel if I can't make someone happy, then I failed. That's when I'd probably start hating myself. But I also realized you can't please everybody. I think that's really important to think about, too. Again, it's really hard to put into words. <laughs> Alright, we'll do a few, uh, a few more questions here, then we're going to call it a ride. I don't want this going past uh, 7.30. <laughs> this face is beautiful. <laughs> well, Cosmic... Oh, Cosmic, at the, at the risk of uh, getting a little too personal but I, I i assume you're on the young side you know <laughs> i mean how old are you uh five five <laughs> <laughs> you're only 20 you're only 20 okay i don't, I don't want to sound like the old man because i'm not that old myself i'm only 31 you know oh, if you're freaking you're 20 years old and you're still in the womb you're that yeah uh, oh my god yeah, that jim carrey sketch from living color that's a fucking deep cut reference you guys even know what the fuck i'm talking about um you're only 20 years old and everybody's naive when they're young i mean you, you don't really with age comes wisdom yada 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 all that sort of shit you know so you don't feel too bad about that sort of thing everybody's that everybody's that way growing up you know and then, you know, when you when you reach my age, you'll realize that Sonic Adventure 2 was never that good. <laughs> when you reach that point in your life, then you've reached Nirvana. <laughs> uh, Ex-Nemesis, John, please ditch Force Night and review Dark Souls 2 and 3. Yeah, okay, I'll tell my cousins that. <laughs> I'll tell my cousins that... Uh, uh, this this one rando on Twitter uh, wants me to stop this review because uh, <laughs> he doesn't like Fortnite. I'll consider it. No, I won't actually. I'm going to review Fortnite. <laughs> I am not on Twitter. You are now. <laughs> Uh, is there a series you generally hate or don't care for, but it has a character you like? A uh, series you generally hate or don't care for, but it has a character you like. Generally, you generally don't care for. I mean, there's a lot of shit I don't care for, but that list is too long. <laughs> okay, um, actually, uh, Teen Titans. Don't care about Teen Titans at all. In any incarnations, I don't care about the original show. I don't care about Teen Titans Go. I don't care about the comic books. But I like the character Raven. I like Raven as a character. I just, uh, I, I, I fucks with her so hard. But, don't care about the show. Like, uh, and I not, don't have any interest in any sort of Teen Titans medium. So, I mean, that's the best answer I can do. The <laughs> sound of Ryan coming over. Oh no, Ryan eats something. <laughs> the sky is blue. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Mario and I went. What would you say had the better cartoons in the '90s, Nick or Cartoon Network? I would say Nick had the better cartoons in the early '90s. Cartoon Network had the better cartoons in the late '90s. Because by the late '90s, the only cartoons I was watching on Nick was repeats of Rugrats, Hey Arnold. And SpongeBob SquarePants. 
But Cartoon Network, I was watching Doctor's Laboratory. I was watching Pop Up Girls, Johnny Bravo, um, fucking Curse the Cowardly Dog. I was watching all that shit. Cow and Chicken, uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I was watching all those cartoons. So I would say, yeah, early 90s Nick, late 90s Cartoon Network. Uh, Mick, your 21st birthday is tomorrow. Can I get a hat birth? And would you be willing to share any cool stories that happen when you turn 21? Well, first off, early hat birth. Everybody wish uh, Mick a hat birth. He's the one that gave me the Steam controller and almost uh, gave my computer a virus. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, except not. Uh, any cool stories that happen on my 21st? Nah, man, I'm, I'm boring. I drunk. I drunk something and that's it. After a while, dude, birthday is just a number that goes up. <laughs> You're celebrating a year that you didn't die. <laughs> and that's all that really matters to me at this point. Happy barf. <laughs> I like that. Uh, God of the Skyheart? Oh, you changed your name. Uh, what would you rather feel when playing a game? Boredom? <laughs> or on reasonable fury. Oh shit, you're 31. Happy being middle age. Hey, this motherfucker. Middle age doesn't start until you're in your 40s, or so I'm told. I mean, if my life expectancy is like 60 something, yeah, I guess I'm middle aged now. But um, I would rather. Here's my thought process when it comes to this, because I'm at a point in time where I do consider the review I can make out of the game. And if I feel I have enough to complain about within reasonability without sounding like a crybaby or tryhard, I would prefer a game piss me off than just bore me. Now, I can get some mileage out of a game boring me because I can go into detail why this game bores me to death, but I feel I could be more entertaining if I'm angry because people like anger. They like when people suffer. <laughs> I mean, and don't deny it. <laughs> you guys you guys love it when I get angry over, you know, whatever it might be. It could be a challenge run. It could be um, playing an old school game that has knockback. Rage as an emotion in video games can be entertaining to watch because it brings out the worst in people, but that is is a form of entertainment and that's why i would rather prefer a game piss me off because i feel i can entertain you guys more with rage than i can with boredom with boredom it's like i, I it's the same shit every now it's like i it went on and on and on i fell asleep I, this is there's nothing to talk about here and card thanks for the ad revenue <laughs> and that's not fun that's not that's not interesting you know when when i got to the end of mega man x command mission now it's like i i had the whole script in my head ready to go by like the halfway point of the game hoping it would get better and it's like it's not it's just sort of stagnating and i should have stopped playing like 10 hours ago trios the only way a game could piss me off because it was boring if it was something I was really looking forward to and ended up not delivering. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Blue, Mr. Blue Mario? No, I've never heard of uh, Fancy Pants Adventures. It's a really cool Flash platform. No, nah, I never heard of it, so I wouldn't know what it is. Fortnite review. What's next on the unlikely to review list? Halo, Call of Duty. I would review Halo before I review Call of Duty. Let's put it that way. Call of Duty, I mean, the only game I would ever really consider reviewing for Call of Duty is probably Modern Warfare 2. Uh, favorite music album or OST? I'm drawing a stand and I need a name for it. Uh, favorite music album or OST? I don't understand any name for it. Uh, for, uh, well, I can't pick just one. I got so many. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just pull something from Michael Jackson. I guess Thriller. Thriller's great. Uh, off the Wall. 
That's another uh, favorite of mine. Bad's great as well. So probably one of those three. Uh, Otaku, would you ever consider inviting a Twitch sub to a main live stream, assuming they have expertise in the game? Not really. No, I'm going to be honest. Uh, the only sort of exception would be races. For, um, I don't know, it totally sounded like I said racist there for a second. Uh, if I'm doing like a Twitch sub race in a game, then that would be the exception. But for a regular live stream playthrough, no. Because to me, doing that would just invite that one person that will just annoy everybody because they're wondering, well, why, why can't I be part of the commentary? Or why can't I be a brain scratch com guy? You know, because I you you got to deal with that, and it's I hate it because it's it, it just comes to the territory, but it's something you got to deal with. So I feel that if I do that, then now I gotta let everybody in. It's selfish, but at the end of the day, it's my live stream, and I like to I like to keep things under my control, and that's that's the best way I can uh, that's the best way I can answer it. Uh, since, uh, since I'm one of your Final Fantasy fourteen fans, <laughs> well, I would have to ask, what job do you wish to see in fourteen? Uh, the blue mage is too obvious. Um, out of the jobs that are not there now, we already have Monk, and I love Monk. I don't know. Pretty much all the classes that are Final Fantasy standard are already in the game. I would like another tank. Like, because we still only have three of those, and we only have three healers. So I would like... No, I guess like, we only have two tanks and one DPS. <laughs> but uh, I would like another tank. Cause I, I, I love I love rotating between Warrior, Paladin, and, and Dark Knight. Well, not so much Dark Knight anymore, but... But, uh... And I'm always good at main Warrior, but I would like to s try another attempt at a, uh, another tank role. But I, I, I don't know what class to bring in that would also justify being a tank. You know what I mean? Trios, I'm sorry, dude. I can't. <laughs> I don't like 70 Dark Knight. I don't like 70 Dark Knight. But that class needs an overhaul for 5.0. If I'm if I'm going to be uh, interested in playing it again. Uh, let me see here. Uh, see for what is your threshold for uncomfortable subjects or otherwise in games or media? My threshold. Uh. No, it's... <sighs> for the sake of discussion, I think it's not healthy to limit conversations on certain topics. It's tricky because you could be really in, uh, ill-informed and just start spouting nonsense and you can end up pissing everybody off because you look like a dumbass. But... If something gets too political for my liking, I tread carefully. I don't turn around, I tread carefully. Because shit like that is important, that affects our everyday lives, and you're a fool if you just ignore it. And... In terms of other things, I would say... Hmm. It depends, because it's really tricky to write around for, but... Uh, I guess, like, the topics of, like, sexual assault, manipulation, uh, toxic masculinity in games, those are something that I tread carefully on because it's hard to put into words what you want to say about those sort of things. In Say, like, in a review, for instance, if I'm playing a game that has those topics, like, front and center, and, like, for a plot summary, you can't avoid it, then I try my damnedest to make sure I make my words clear, concise, and what my point is to get it across from a general perspective. Um, but generally, I, I tend not to avoid something because of its political message or its message in general. If I, I've done Metal Gear, 
<laughs> and what's Metal Gear if not a giant social commentary, political commentary on 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 nuclear war, uh, th just it, it, the uh, war infrastructure, uh, th digital information, all sort of thing. And if anything, that was kind of that was kind of fun to like play those games and do plot summaries for those sort of things because that was interesting trying to, you know, finally expressing my opinion on that sort of thing. Again, I didn't, again, I didn't write thesis on them, but it was refreshing getting my thoughts and opinions on the themes of, especially in Sons of Liberty. In Sons of Liberty and uh, MGS5, I want to say, those were pretty interesting to write about because it, it was out of my, it, it was out of my comfort zone for how I go about plot summaries. <laughs> Rest in peace, Miller. He's a spirit now. <laughs> you know, so, long story short, I'm willing to... I don't really have a threshold, but I do have... I have a certain way of going about how to express my opinion on this certain thing or that certain thing. All right, one more question, and we're going to call it a wrap here. Uh, how much would you charge to read an for? How much would you charge to do uh, read an audiobook? Uh, it depends on how long the audiobook is, and I probably won't be doing it anytime soon because I don't know. I, I already I already read enough scripts <laughs> for reviews. And, uh, I don't know. Hey, I mean, it's, you, you guys say I put you to sleep anyway, and I'm still not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. And, um, if I can do some ASMR, you know, I, I read you guys a bedtime story, and then I ruin it by, you know, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> then I would love to do that. Uh, so, I mean, who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, uh, Damon, so. <laughs> well, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. I actually managed to get pretty much all the questions answered. You guys were writing more questions as I was, uh, as I was reading them through, so, um, yeah. Uh, again, I want to start making these, uh, I, I want to start making these a monthly thing. You know, they'll, re they'll only replace one sub night. Uh, for Fridays because uh, I, I feel these are some of the best ways I can get in touch with you guys because you know doing shit like this doesn't require having a game or owning a game it's just it just means you sit your ass here and uh, listen to me ramble for like two two and a half hours and then watch as someone literally has a sub orgasm and gets it all over the Twitch chat uh, it's totally not Mitch okay because uh, I, I want to make sure you like he didn't actually like you know, sacrifice his human life to give away all those damn gift subs. I just want to make sure he's all right. He's okay, I think, Cosmic. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> well, thank you for the bits, uh, Grove. I much appreciate it. I'll spend that dollar wisely. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. What, what, what costs a dollar nowadays? Because not even the dollar menu at McDonald's is a dollar. It's like a dollar seven. <laughs> He's in a better place now. <laughs> All right, well, uh, as we're wrapping this up, I will see you guys tomorrow at noon here and on uh, hopefully on YouTube because uh, we got to get the simulcast ready for that. Tomorrow is the beginning of Mega Maniacs, 25 hours of classic Mega Man until fucking noon of the next day. You guys know how it works. So here's hoping for a great time. Again, uh, if you're if you're curious, the bottom of this video on the channel's page, the link to the donation page is already there, as well as the buttons for the uh, the Switch raffle and the uh, the S the NES and the SNES Classic bundle. Again, minimum twenty five dollar donation enters you for the Switch raffle, and a minimum fifteen dollar donation. Uh, makes you eligible for uh, the NES raffle. So if anything, by donating twenty five dollars, you qualify for both raffles because it's only fifteen for the, the the bundle and it's twenty five for the switch. So if you donate twenty five, you're killing two birds at one stone. You have you have a better chance of winning a prize because you you're entered for both entries. So 
Uh, God, 25 hours. Uh, I, I hope to Christ I get enough sleep. <laughs> because uh, by like hour, hour 16 and 17 is when it gets miserable. And then I, I get the second win, but it's like it takes forever. Uh... Ten Elements is the Switch NTSC only, as in, is it an American Switch? Yeah, we did buy the Switch here in the United States. So, yeah, the Switch is already bought. So, uh, I'm not sure if that would mean anything to you. Oh, the, oh, the Switch is region free. All right, well, okay, well, that doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, if you're asking about in terms of, like, uh, the region, then, yeah, it doesn't matter. But the Switch was bought here in America. And it is, yeah, and anybody who's qualified worldwide, it doesn't matter. I'll cover the shipping costs if somebody in uh, in Europe or Asia or Australia or Russia wins it. Uh, so don't worry about that. Customs is going to be a bitch. <laughs> but, well, you know, I'll, we'll cover the cost for that one. The same goes for the um, the bundle. And uh, we'll, uh, no, not the Antarctic uh, trios. And oh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for Mega Maniacs here on Twitch and on YouTube. Have a good night, everybody. And wait, hold on. We should raid someone. We got to raid someone. Let me uh, take a look at my page. Well, let's raid a rando. Let me see. I'm thinking of a game. You know what? Let's look at Castlevania. Oh, you know what? Okay, let's let's raid someone from a totally different country. Uh, this German player is playing Symphony of the Night. So let's see here. We're gonna raid them. Now we need a raid hashtag. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> with all these crazy Americans. Who the fuck is Johnny? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I like Mega Maniacs, Pokemon Master. Subliminal advertisement. No, not German porn. Alright. Have at it. I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>